All right, here we go. Welcome back to the Road to Village. Today we're going to be playing Resident Evil The Umbrella Chronicles. Uh, quite the interesting spin-off title that we have for you today. So, The Umbrella Chronicles is based off of the events of RE0, REHD, and RE3. And um, there's also some Wes uh, Wesker sections that are exclusive to this game. So you actually get uh, quite a bit more lore, despite the fact that this is a spin-off. There is a lot of canonical lore that exists in this game that is actually really, really cool to watch. So all of the game segments that are here are like condensed from their full versions of the game, but it covers most of the major plot points in those games. So that way you kind of get like an in summary of kind of what's going on. So we're gonna be starting out with RE0. <clears throat> and this actually is set up to play with two players, interestingly enough. All right, let's go. It was a stormy night when the leeches overwhelmed the Ecliptic Express. The special forces unit. This is all to told from Wesker's point of view. Reported an emergency, but the announcement was suddenly cut off and followed only by silence. And to the Stars unit member, Rebecca Chambers. Umbrella has been at the center of my plans for a long time. But the train incident would prove to be the beginning of the end. Stars here. Is anybody there? Stars here. Is anybody there? Shit. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> You're the escaped prisoner, Billy Cohen. Can we put a hold on the whole arresting me thing? We have bigger things to worry about right now. Oh, shit. Aim using the left stick. Move left stick to change the aiming direction. The number of shots left along with the bullet gauge is displayed by the targeting reticle. Target reticle is over target, press to fire, the bullet gauge will drop. If reload is displayed, you need to reload your weapon. Take damage, your health gauge will deplete. If it runs out, it's over. You know, this game would actually be sick in VR. One thing by this, uh, about this game, by the way, that's super fun is that you can actually like shoot down scenery and stuff. Fine, we'll worry about that later. For now, we better get to safety. That'll be easier said than done. Stairs. They're on the stairs, too. The train. It's moving. Who's driving this thing? How the hell would I There's actually like files and shit out. hidden behind this stuff, but I don't know where they all are, so definitely gonna be one of those things where when we find them we'll you know. Do what we gotta do.
Uh, I've played Dead Aim, but it's been a long, long time. anything like this. <laughs> That's funny. That's dangerous. your step princess don't call me princess gosh this is so dangerous Shotgun, yay! And how exactly did you get here? I was being transported when we were attacked by monsters. All the guards were killed. So you figured it was the perfect chance to make your escape, huh? Well, not on my watch. I just saved your ass back there. You still want to arrest me? Save that ass. You all right? First aid spray though, so it's okay.
House of the Dead RE edition? Yeah, dude. Let's go this way. This sounds like fun. Yo, I hit L1. Shit. <sighs> that was rough. All right, I'm still getting warmed up to the controls here. This game is a lot harder on um, on a controller. Another instance where I hit L1 and didn't work. Looks like the stinger is a weak point too. JJ. Obtained shotgun. Obtained mixing set. Obtained memo. 
Court order. Stinger notes. Leech notes. Derailment two. No, I don't want to sign in. Yo, the soundtrack in this game though is sick. So yeah, you can go to the archives here and look at your stuff. This briefcase of Rebecca's contained tools for mixing medicine. Memo on the founding of Umbrella. Extracted from the Umbrella archives. Introduction, Umbrella was founded in 1968 by three partners. Myself, my good friend Edward Ashford, and the preeminent virology expert, Dr. James Marcus. We all shared a common goal from the outset. We believed that virus research would play an important role in improving people's health. One day, it would even help to build a society free from the ills of disease. The Umbrella logo is a symbol of our unwavering pledge, preserving the health of the people. Technology is the umbrella that will serve that purpose. Thanks to everyone's support, our company has grown and the Umbrella logo is recognized and trusted throughout the world. For 40 years, we have followed our principles and delivered safety and peace of mind to medical facilities and homes. I would like to thank our loyal shareholders, employees, and customers for their invaluable contributions to our continuing success. Unfortunately, both Edward and James have passed on in the course of this last year. While I mourn their loss, I feel their shining example lives on in the work we do every day. I know they would be proud if they could see Umbrella now. We at Umbrella will continue to do our best to spur new innovation and make the world a better place for everyone. Humanity's future is safe under our umbrella. We appreciate your continued support. Umbrella Corporation founder, Oswell E. Spencer. But the reality is that he actually killed both of them. <laughs> Court order for transportation. Prisoner name, Billy Cohen, ID number DTAC 1036, former 2nd Lieutenant Marine Corps. Age 26, height 5 feet 9 inches. Wow, he's actually not that tall. He's the same height as I am. I figured he was like 6 feet tall. Weighed 163 pounds, transfer destination, Ragarthon Base. Convicted of first degree murder, court martialed and sentenced to death uh, by the 0703rd. Military tribunal sentenced to be carried out upon arrival. Samuel Reagan, Commander, Donnell, Marine Base. Well, shit! Right? All right, chapter two, let's go. After they destroyed the biological weapon, Rebecca and Billy successfully engaged the brake and halted the runaway train. But the massive force created ended up derailing it. The pair barely managed to escape with their lives. Lying in front of them, was the demolished umbrella facility. Come on. <laughs> Richard here. Rebecca, where are you? I'm not sure, but... I can see the entrance. All right. I'm heading to the mansion right now. We'll rendezvous there. Roger. So I'm guessing you need a bodyguard, right? No. Do you? <laughs> no. I feel like they change voice actors and actresses like every time a game features Rebecca. Yeah, he does look tall. I'm surprised that with as much muscle as he has that he's only... What did they say? 167 pounds? There's no way. Yes. You're pretty good. What is this place? 
Good lord. We had to kill the chef, guys. We killed the chef. Just in case. The Umbrella Management Training Facility. The first general manager, James Marcus. You know him? Just the name. He's been dead for some time now. Friendly looking guy. Even dead, he has quite a presence. Attention! This is Dr. Marcus. Please be silent as we reflect upon our company motto. I don't want to be sad. Discipline breeds unity. Unity breeds power. Power is life. Billy, up there. Get him, dude. Not this way. Here. Forget them. We're going through. Umbrella corporate. Well, hello. Good Lord. That's always fun. Man, you mean to tell me we could have hopped over that thing the whole time in the original game? Exciting. Middle of the Arclay Mountains. Creepy. Creepy mansion, right? I mean, this isn't even the. We have to find another way. Yeah, let's go back. Yeah, take it easy, lighting. Have a good one, buddy. Oh, shit. 
<laughs> Dude, some of the cutscenes in this game are comical, man. Thank you. Billy, I'm sorry, but I have to know. Did you really kill 23 people? We were ordered to attack the village. But orders don't justify slaughtering innocent people. So, what happened in that village? You can't talk about it, can you? Oh! Hey, buddy. Oh, I was hoping he would jump. What it do? It won't change the past. If you don't want to talk about it, I'll understand. But I'm not afraid of you anymore. I'm an escaped fugitive, remember? Didn't they tell you I was dangerous? Yes, they did. Did you guys hear that? Rebecca's not afraid anymore. What the hell are you doing? Rebecca is not afraid anymore. Yo, P2, what's up, buddy? Hey, I shot that chandelier do down. WTH, man. Office. Yeah, survival first. First time seeing this game? Yeah, it's like a House of the Dead style Resident Evil spin off title. <laughs> No, I wanted the file. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Sorry. An elevator. This will get us up. Uh, yeah, there's some files and some, uh, parts of this game that aren't in like their own their own titles there was a file in there I'm kind of mad I missed it hey Belly, what's up, buddy? Every single time you watch the stream, you miss RE resistance, dude. I don't miss resistance like at all. I had fun with it while it lasted, but... Ugh, it's 
Smells like the zoo. Smells like shit. Yeah, this game is, uh, I mean, it's fun. It's got a lot of flaws, but it's fun. And there's a lot of added story value, so. I definitely don't mind including it as part of the, uh, the franchise playthrough. Oh, good lord. Am I supposed to shoot that? No. I mean, Rebecca is in. She's in RE1, but aside from that, no. Rebecca's a school nurse. <laughs> That's funny. Now, uh, nobody knows what happened to Billy. He hasn't been seen since Zero and Rebecca. She's actually in we made it outside. Uh, the latest CGI movie that came out. I think it was like 2017. Uh, Vendetta. She ends up going on to be a researcher at like the University of Chicago or something like that. I don't remember exactly where, but she's in the movie. If you want to find out what happens to her, you can watch Vendetta. Yeah, OG Belly. Shot. What now? We have to go up. Right. 
I am dangerously low on ammo. Good lord. Yeah, ish. I think I paid two dollars for this. Something like that. I think I got a, I think I got Dark Side Chronicles and Umbrella Chronicles for like a dollar ninety nine each. They were having a huge sale where it was like ninety percent off. On my PS3, so I was just like, you know what? Let's do it. For two bucks, you can't go wrong. It's good entertainment for, for a couple bucks. Statue of Evil Good. Statues representing a demon and an angel used to open a door. So as you can see, I am nowhere near collecting all the files. I'm not going to be able to get all the files in a single playthrough, though. There's a lot of files in this, but there's good lore. And a lot of these files are just rehash files from the other games, too, so it's not, it's not that big of a deal. But Stinger Notes. The Stinger is a B.O.W., Created by administering the T-Virus to a scorpion. As a result of the virus, the creature rapidly grows to a massive size and its pincers become powerful enough to cut through steel. The increased thickness and strength of the exoskeleton enables it to absorb damage from firearms. However, the creature's slow movement prevents its effective usage as a BOW in the field. Leech Notes. This blood-sucking leech is approximately 20 centimeters in length. Bred by Dr. Marcus, this creature has evolved in ways previously unthinkable in an analyte. When multiple leeches are present, they have been observed to have, uh, form a collective consciousness. They consume flesh by attaching their enlarged mouths to prey and possess the ability to entirely consume a human in a matter of minutes. James Marcus Profile, first head of Umbrella Management Research Management Training Facility. A founding member of the Umbrella Corporation and one of the pioneers who discovered the progenitor virus, he also was involved in his research that he began to use Umbrella employees as test subjects in his experiments. The total number of sacrifices totaled nearly 20 people. Acting on their special orders from Oswald E. Spencer, Albert Wesker, and William Birkin assassinated Dr. Marcus in 1988. However, 10 years after his death, he was mysteriously revived. To exact his revenge, he began secret activities with the goal of not only destroying Umbrella, but the entire world. Eliminator Notes. The Eliminator is a biological weapon created from a large monkey by Dr. James Marcus. Being based on primates, the creature is highly intelligent and capable of executing commands. In response to the virus, the Eliminator's muscle tissue strengthens and swells to such an extent as to tear through its skin. When detecting prey, hunger drives it to jump viciously and attack with incredible speed. Hey, calm down. 
Miss Alex Games, thank you for the raid. Hope you had a good stream. Billy and Rebecca discover a ropeway under the church. A huge bat habitat and rode it down to a factory. It was deep within that the two found true the truth. Oh god. Typos galore. Oh, find the source of the problem down there. Let's go. That was just like typo city. Plan RE4, very nice. Hey, I got the file. Up there, watch out. Hey, finally the grenade launcher. Very nice. We can get down using this. Yo, I'm Ram24. What's up, buddy? Rebecca's underrated, I guess. Yeah. It'd be nice to see her make a return in some of the games, but at the same time, I don't feel like it would be incredibly viable, considering that... Uh... Considering that she kind of removed herself from any sort of like combat roles. Oh! 
really. Might mar make Ari a lot more horror. That is true. That is true. Very good point there. Go. the guy from the picture. Marcus? But you're dead. Ten years ago, Spencer had me assassinated and stole all of my research. Well, shit. However, something wondrous happened. The T-Virus fused with the leeches and brought me back from the darkness of death. Now, I will have my revenge on Umbrella, and the world will burn in an inferno of hate. Uh, this SMV isn't entirely reused. A lot of the dialogue is like the same script. Come on, move! 
Nice. The hell is that thing? Billy, be careful! It's catching up! How am I supposed to do that? It must have some weak spot. We need to find a way to keep it there. I got it! Aim for the mouth! This monster doesn't know when to give up! Well, I got no bullets here, so this is going to be interesting. Uh, it doesn't like sunlight. Where's the music, man? Come on, dude. Won't you ever give up? It could swallow us whole. Yeah, I literally have no fucking ammo. I'm hitting L1, dude.
There it is, okay. JJ. I guess it's time to say goodbye. People are waiting for me. Officially, Lieutenant Billy Cohen is dead. Rebecca, thank you. Possible odds and made it out alive. Lucky, I suppose. Since the event, Billy Cohen has gone missing. While Rebecca is about to enter a new nightmare as she heads for the mansion. Hey, Frostwolf, what is up, buddy? Got the grenade launcher. We got the RE Zero Digest. Mansion Incident One. No, it's not Hannibal. I think we got a couple files we we can read here. Meanwhile, Meanwhile, I will bring up a vote while we're reading these files here. You guys pick whether we start with the mansion incident or um, the Wesker section next. Um, all right. We're going to play all of it, but obviously, if you guys want to pick the order and all that stuff, I'm totally down with that. So, all right. File wise, uh, oh, I must have only gotten one file. Well, okay. Resident Evil Zero, Digest 1. Bizarre murder cases with people being found dead, their bodies half-eaten, were being reported in the areas near Raccoon City. The city's elite Special Forces Unit, STARS, sent their Bravo team to, to the scene. However, due to a mysterious engine failure, Bravo Team's helicopter crash-landed in the forest. Bravo Team narrowly escaped with their lives and stumbled onto a heavily damaged prison convoy and the brutally dismembered corpses of the Marines in charge. Enrico Marini, Bravo Team's commander, ordered that a search team be made for Billy Coe, a former Marine who escaped from the convoy. The newest member of Bravo Team, Rebecca Chambers, discovered a train stopped in the woods and went inside to investigate. Apparently, the train had met with some kind of accident as she found all of the passengers dead. One of the supposedly dead passengers came to life and attacked Rebecca. Completely surrounded and facing certain death, the prisoner Billy Cohen was responsible for her rescue. Rebecca was still suspicious of Billy, but realized they needed to work together if they needed to survive, or if they wanted to survive the nightmare. Shortly after, the train suddenly started to move, and it accelerated and was rapidly approaching dangerous speeds. To prevent imminent derailment, the pair engaged the brake. However, it was too late, and the train rolled on its side. The two barely managed to escape the wreck. Waiting near them was Umbrella's management training facility. And you guys know the rest. All right. Was there any archives already for the 24th? Uh, nope, not yet. Alright, looks like we got just around 30 seconds left on the clock. Get your votes in, guys. Are we going to do the mansion incident? Or are we going to do Wesker's Beginnings? Chapter 1. 
So many great options here, you know? Right now, Wesker part one is winning. It's looking like Wesker part one is gonna be the winner. Just a few seconds left. And the winner is Wesker part one. All right. The plans to reuse the management training facility were scrapped by Marcus's unfortunate outburst. Not only that, but the incident appeared to spread the virus to the area surrounding the mansion, causing a biohazard outbreak. It is time to abandon the sinking ship that is Umbrella. Middle of the night, July 23rd. The virus is out. We can't hide this anymore. It appears Umbrella is finished. We're just gonna walk away? Our research isn't complete. We can make a more powerful virus. Do what you like. The T virus is near completion and only needs test data. That is why STARS is in place. I will bring them into the mansion. Birkin. I better get rid of this place before there are any more complications. Hmm. Wesker here. I will use the ropeway to return to the training facility and depart from there. Hey, the Magnum. The power is out. I need to get it running. The power room should be down below.
There we go. Got to get some critical hits in there, you know? Make things a little more interesting. It's just fun. I like I know it's a huge waste of a grenade, but I like just throwing grenades in rooms where there's a ton of stuff to blow up. It's just too fun. Well, dang, dude. supposed to have been disposed of. Uh, no, Buttercup, uh, I am playing it on PS3.
Apparently even this refuse has T's recovery ability. Oh! It's brittle. The BOW still needs a little more work. Motherboard, William Birkin file, and Wesker's Beginnings Chapter 2. Chapter two. Let's see. Um, I'll take the machine gun with me. Yo, Chaka, what's up, buddy? Glad you like the uh, GDQ room. Powered up the ropeway and reached the surface. He still had to escape through the training facility, teeming with BOWs, howling for blood. I had best hurry. Yeah, that, I mean, that run was quite a while ago now. So. It's been a little while since that run. My hair is a lot longer than it was back then. This game would be so freaking sick in VR. Tell you what, they instead of doing RE4 in VR, they should have done this. This game would have been nuts in VR, dude.
I'm in rough shape, my dude. Wesker over here looking just bad ass, dude. I actually think it's kind of cool that they uh, have Crimson Heads here on this section of the game. Even though there's no Crimson Heads in RE0, oh, there is a item there. There we go. Whoa! Saw, dude. These guys have so much health, dude. Good lord. Pew, pew, pew. Next mission. 
The reclamation of the management training facility was your mission. And now you're just going to walk away without taking responsibility for your failure. The T-Virus has escaped. I will detonate the facility and dispose of it. Comrade, don't forget who's in charge. You can't just do what you feel like. He just like plays with his knife just by reminder. That should be intriguing. Good lord. Good thing I got a fast. Dude! Really? This guy is so fucking resilient. And I didn't pick up the Magnum either, which kind of makes it slightly worse. This should be intriguing. I also think it's super dumb that you get like no opportunity whatsoever to pick up that rocket launcher that's over there. There's a rocket launcher back there with three rounds in it and it's like damn near impossible to pick it up. I guess he didn't like his lesson. <laughs> Fine. We have the Talos retrieval to take care of anyway. Everything for Umbrella. My pursuers left behind. I regrouped with the Star's Alpha team. There was no time for delays. Umbrella's command structure was in motion. And the real struggle was about to begin. A. Alright, cool. 
Rocket launcher. Oh, tons of files, my dude. All right, let's read some lore. We can also upgrade some weapons before we move on as well. Uh, yeah, this happens like between RE0 and RE1. So this is stuff that you don't really find out about until playing this game. But a lot of it's canon. We got the motherboard. William Birkin Profile. A world-renowned scientist working for Umbrella. He is the primary figure responsible for the development of the G-Virus. He was also a core component in continuing the research on the T-Virus where Marcus left off. However, some unpleasantness arose between him and Umbrella, prompting him to approach the U.S. military. Umbrella responded by sending in their special forces. Shortly before his death at their hands, he injected himself with the G-Virus and transformed into a monster. He is survived by a daughter, Sherry, from his late wife, Annette. Regulations for the trainees. Training facility mission. This training facility will raise a new generation of model employees to serve the future of Umbrella Corporation. Applying the strictest, most rigorous training standards, this facility will, without regard for race, gender, or creed, produce only the best candidates to be the future leaders of Umbrella. We look forward to the development of your leadership qualities. Training facility guidelines, discipline, obedience, unity. These three words are the basic principles that should guide all Umbrella Corporation employees and are to be considered the law of this facility. Keep these words in mind at all times. Devote yourselves to the training and bring honor to yourselves and the corporation. James Marcus, Director, Umbrella Corporation Management Training Facility. So that file is actually direct from RE0. So like I said, we're going to read whatever files I find, but most of them we probably already read in our playthroughs of RE1 through 3 or RE0 through 3, but, um, you know, we'll still read whatever we find here too. December 4th, we finally did it. The new virus. We call it Progenitor. I will begin de detailed investigations into this virus immediately. Yo, Iridium, what's up, buddy? March 29th, erd. March 29th. Spencer says he's going to start a company. Well, I don't care. As long as I can continue my research into Progenitor. He can do whatever he likes. August 19th. Spencer keeps hassling me to become the director of his new training facility. Maybe it's due to the business, but he's becoming intolerably pushy. Perhaps I can turn this to my advantage. I need a special facility to properly explore all the secrets of this virus. A place where no one will get in the way. November 30th. Damn that Spencer. He came to complain to me again today. He thinks of Progenitor as nothing more than a money-spinning tool. Fool. But if his influence continues to grow, it can only be bad for my research. If I am to properly develop Progenitor, I must strengthen my own position too. September 19th. At last, I've discovered a way to build a new virus type with Progenitor as a base. Mixing it with leech DNA was the breakthrough I needed. I call this new virus T. And it marks the first successful der der derivation of the progenitor line. October 23rd. It's no good. I can't hope for progress by experimenting on mere rodents. Only humans can be a proper a mammalian subject for these experiments. Otherwise, I'll never make any real progress. November 15th. Someone seems to suspect something about my experiments, but perhaps it's just my imagination. Well, if anyone does get too close, they may find themselves unexpectedly assisting in my research. January 13th. At last they are ready, my wonderful leeches. Those of low intelligence will never have the privilege of tasting this sense of joy and satisfaction. Now, finally, I can move against Spencer. Soon I will control everything. January 31st. The devices I set to protect my work have been disturbed. It appears someone came looking for tea in the leeches. Fool. No doubt the work of Spencer's group. February 11th. Today, again, I found evidence of tampering around the entrance to the labs. If that's what they're after, I must find a suitable way to deal with them. Perhaps I should have William and Albert smoke out the pests. Those two are the only ones I trust, apart from my beloved leeches. Of course, but Spencer, it wouldn't end there, would it? I think that is all. All 
All right, we are ready to begin the mansion incident, but first, we have some points that we can use to upgrade some stuff. I'm trying to figure out what I should upgrade. I think the submachine gun is probably the best thing to upgrade because the SMG is one of the more commonly used weapons. So, I think that would be good. Incident. Here we go. That was the night I led the Stars Alpha team into the Arklay Mountains and we touched down in the surrounding woods. We were to look into the disappearance of Frodo team. At least, that was the fate. The reality was quite a different story for the unsuspecting members of the Alpha team. After being attacked by a pack of monsters, only Chris and a few others, including myself, made it to the mansion. Everything was going according to plan. Soon, I would have the research data that I needed. What is this hall? What was that? I'll go check it out. It's dangerous going alone. I'll come with you. All right. I will stay and secure the area. Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah, let's go, dude! So this version of the mansion in this incident runs under the premise that Jill and Chris go through the mansion together. Which isn't entirely true, but it's kind of a cross between, like, what the actual canon is and, like, you know, obviously accommodating the fact that this is designed to be a multiplayer game. <laughs> to eBay, yeah. <laughs> it's a good game. Oh, shit. This can't be happening. No, we're too late. What's going on? Kenneth got wrecked. Too. We need to get out of here. What are these things? Uh, yes, I did feed ghost. have to find another way behind you uh. 
Oh. This place is no good. We need to keep moving. Maybe we'll find some of the others along the way. So many of them. Let's move it. Right. I'll check it out. Oh, shit! Oh! <laughs> Behind you! Something's close. Oh, you can feel it? Okay. Well. Hey, Kirby. you want to go buy a ps3 there are so many better games to buy a ps3 for let me just say if i here's the thing if i were to do this over again i would if you're gonna play this game i would definitely play it on the wii the motion controls make it so much better that's just my opinion though This one's quick. Yeah, he's different from the others. I'm telling you though, like I said, put this game in VR and it'd be it'd be freaking nuts, dude. That's all I'm saying. There's something very hot about this mansion. No kidding. I don't think this is just someone's summer home. This is the area where all of those murders happened. There's got to be some connection. Things just keep getting stranger and stranger, but I think you're right. I heard something coming from this room. Hmm. Yo, use that knife, dude. Yeah, good knife technique there.
thought we already killed them. They're coming! This way! Have you made contact oh. with the Bravo team? No, I can't reach them. Let's look for survivors. Yeah, they stole a lot of assets from RE4. They stole a ton of stuff from RE4. Like even picking up items is like the same thing. Not like this. No, not forest. Put him down. I'm sorry, Forrest. I'll miss our target practice sessions. <laughs> I love how he just says it that casually, you know? You're hurt. Stay back. Can you get Wesker on the line? There's still no response. I hope everyone's all right. Yo, pick up the phone, dude. Yo, pick up the phone, call my guy Wesker, and just let him know we're all right, okay? We're actually in rough shape right now. Here we go. Look out! Let's go around. This way. Got it. Okay then. Ooh. Yo, shotgun to the face and he still didn't die. That's exciting. Check it out. Here we go. What in the hell? Watch the fangs. I bet. Hang on a second. This water bottle that I have is like, it's got a bulge on the bottom, so it doesn't want to like sit upright. Even if they aren't, if that thing gets a hold of us, we're screwed. Get around it and keep your distance. Right. Oh, 
one's tougher than I expected. Try shooting its mouth. Change your mind about playing it in VR. Jill, the chandelier. Fuck this shit. Chris Redfield, from Alpha Team. Alpha Team? Thank goodness! Everything's okay now, Richard. Richard! You did! Jill Valentine profile, Chris Redfield profile, Kenneth profile, all the profiles, okay? We've got a few stars here. See what they did there? Stars. See? I see what they did there. I mean, the shotgun and the rifle are the more common items that you get, so. All right, we'll do the mansion incident first and then we'll go through nightmares. Well, we'll do a vote before RE3. We'll play Jill for this next scenario. Leaving Rebecca to care for Richard, Chris and Jill continue to explore the mansion. Wesker was still MIA, and they were stuck in a mansion brimming with secrets. An eerie courtyard stretched out before them. I'm glad those two are okay. It would be too dangerous to move Richard now, but we left them with enough ammo and medicine to protect themselves. I'm still worried. Oh! We have to find a way to make contact with someone on the outside. Definitely. Hmm. I wonder what happened to Wesker. We need to find the others. Right. Let's hurry. 
This is a remix of the Aqua Ring OST. Haze Blade, sub two Haze Blade. If right. we open the floodgate, we should be able to cross. Sub two Haze Blade. Fox, when I first started playing, or when I first started streaming, I was actually playing like PUBG and stuff like that, and I was not very good. When I actually like started taking streaming seriously, though, I was playing Dark Souls 3. I was okay at that. That was a few years ago now, though. Sub to Haze Blade, follow Haze Blade. Follow his blade. Ow! There's a fast over there. I would like to. I would like to get that. There we go. Very nice. Teams of two covering each, other, covering each other's back. No way would they separate like the actual game. Yeah. I agree. This is definitely a more accurate depiction of how this would have went down. <laughs> and and it does it does kind of go down like this, sort of. The actual canon is that after Richard dies, like there there are periods of time when they get separated. Um, let's go through the residence. It was, it was pretty easy to hit, actually. Yeah, so as it outlines in RE0, you can actually, there's some options that you can take where you get to pick where you go. And um, there is different scenery and stuff. So in this, you still end up at the same place, but you can go either through the mines or you can go through the front door of the residence. And there's different items and stuff that you get. To get all the files in this game, it takes multiple playthroughs. And that's why, like I said, like, we're only going to play through once. Whatever files we do pick up, we'll go ahead and read in between, in between chapters, but... I'm in rough shape here, chat. Wow. 
Well, shit. Yeah, we'll be doing RE7 down the line. Still got a little ways to go for RE7, though. A lot of these stagger animations are also from RE4. Yeah, I was into PUBG for a little while. More or less like before Fortnite and all that was popular. about Richard. We have to make contact with someone. Nice. I love how there's a dead body on there and they're just chilling. This is their checkpoint spot. I don't know why. It just seems funny to me. Oh. 
Oh! Another file, dude. Yeah, I'm getting files for days up in here, man. Good. I'm in a bad way right now. Something in here. Look out! It's coming right at us. What? Yo, I blasted him, dude. What is that thing? It looks like a giant plant. Look out! It's too big! There must be something we can do! Chill! Aim for that flower! God dang it! Try that again. What is that thing? It looks like a giant plant. Look out! Careful. I'm sure it's dangerous. Got it. You better be careful, too.
Dude, it's so difficult to pick anything up, man. There's like a ton of shit up here, but I can't pick it up because every opportunity you get, there's always something in the way. Outright rank with Gore, but Kyle's like, nope, I'll sleep here. Yeah, basically. Look at that S rank. We'll read some lore before the final mansion scenario here. These three decorations were used to obtain the Magnum. All right. Jill Valentine Profile, a member of Star's Alpha Team. She is very dexterous and is an expert at picking locks, earning her the somewhat awkward title of Master of Unlocking. She is not only highly skilled in bomb disposal, but she is excellent at breaking down any situation and determining the best course of action. Her years of U.S. Army Delta Force training have helped her help make her a crack shot. After the destruction of Raccoon City, both her and Chris have joined a private biohazard containment unit with the goal of taking Umbrella down once and for all. Serious with a strong sense of justice, she's very direct in her actions. She typically only shows her tough side to others, but there are times when she lets her guard down and shows a softer side. Chris Redfield Profile Member of Star's Alpha Team, his marksmanship is number one amongst the sharpshooters assembled in Alpha. He was once a pilot in the United States Air Force and has been rigorously trained in hand-to-hand -hand as well as knife combat. He has pursued Umbrella and the people behind it even after the fall of Raccoon City by helping to organize a private biohazard containment unit. An excellent observer with keen insight, his sense of right and wrong is unwavering. This is often a source of conflict between Chris and his superiors. He has a younger sister, Claire, who is, he is very protective of. Kenneth J. Sullivan Profile a member of Star's Bravo team, he is a veteran who can be trusted to bring his vast experience and wisdom to his investigations. He is charged with recon and position security. He made it to the mansion, but was soon overtaken and became a meal for a zombie. Arclay Research Facility, Mansion Notes. Umbrella's Raccoon Research Facility, Umbrella's Research Facility built deep within Raccoon Forest. The primary facilities are buried deep underground, while the two-story mansion that rests above ground serves as a facade. The mansion's construction includes a wide range of insidious traps and devices created by the architect George Trevor. Yo, what? What's up, buddy? Cerberus Notes. The Cerberus is a B.O.W. Oh, excuse me. Created by administering the T-Virus to large Dobermans with, uh, used in the military. Its skin is severely decayed, although its speed and endurance are considerably heightened. When it finds its prey, it will coordinate with others in its pack and attack in waves. They are suspected to be the main cause of the numerous mutilated bodies found in Raccoon Forest. Hunter Notes. The Hunter was a battle BOW born from a fertilized human egg infused with reptilian DNA with the assistance of the T-Virus. It is extremely deadly in combat and possesses large, sharp claws. It is intelligent enough to carry out basic commands and can cut down prey with astonishing agility and jumping power, making it truly deserving of the name Hunter. 
Neptune Notes. A new form of BOW created from a great white shark base. It was developed as an experiment that would prove that the T-Virus would combine well with sea creatures. However, the introduction of the T-Virus provided only minimal enhancement to the pre-existing strength of the shark, and the result can hardly be employed as a true BOW. In the seas, it knows no enemies, but on land, it is powerless. Web Spinner Notes, a new BOW developed from early experiments with arthropods. Its name is derived from its roots as a spider, but the mutated creature now uses its acidic venom to capture prey and no longer relies on webs. With its spider ability to climb on walls and ceilings, it is under consideration as a useful weapon, but the inability to exert control over it ended that line of research. Black Tiger Notes. We didn't fight Black Tiger in this one, but... It's all good. A disposed of web spinner which mutated and grew even larger and more deadly. It can be differentiated from a web spinner by the black markings on its body. Its ability to create a web and nest has returned, providing it with an additional tool for trapping large prey. Plant 42 notes. Plant 42 was created accidentally during the T-Virus outbreak. Researchers who had discovered the plant studied it with great interest and its growth overwhelmed that of other plants. Although it cannot move its trunk, it can lash out with tentacle-like appendages to ensnare prey and drain them of their blood for nutrients. It has also generated many other self-defense mechanisms to protect itself from would-be attackers. Lots of notes on that one. After fighting off an army of monsters, Chris and Jill stumbled upon a hidden underground research facility. There was no doubt that Wesker was here. The two carefully descended down into the darkness, not knowing what lurked below. Something big was going down here. I got a bad feeling about this. Be careful. Almost missed it. Is. I'm sure of it. Let's hurry. Good lord. Fully upgraded shotgun. It still takes like three shells just to kill a crimson head.
Oh snap. Yeah, I'm pretty well versed on the lore, Juicy. The power's out. There must be a switch. Shoot all the lights in the game. <laughs> Well, underneath some of the lights, there's actually, like, like you have to destroy stuff to find weapons, ammo, files, stuff like that in this game. Gives you incentive to explore. I feel like I don't necessarily need to talk about the lore extensively when we're playing through literally every game that has relevant lore in the franchise. I mean, generally, if people have, like, questions about, like, what happens between X, Y, Z, time frame, whatever, I can usually provide some context, but I tend to more so talk about what's currently happening, which I think right now what's currently happening is relatively obvious. Why was Mr. X brought in on RE2? He was brought in to basically eliminate any... Specifically, I believe the initial... Um, the initial targets were police officers. But then on top of that, pretty much anybody that had any involvement with or knowledge of Umbrella's involvement in the outbreak. A sample for Sherry. That was part of his objective, but that's not the power. only thing that he was Let's brought in for. Why'd you come in and just try to quiz people? Yeah, I mean, it's a little strange that somebody just like, you know, See, I can shoot out all the other screens, but I can't shoot out this one. Now the elevator should work. Uh, no, it's not the full game. It's all of like the major plot points are in are in here, but like they definitely condense it down to. I would say most scenarios are about about forty five minutes. But it depends on like which route you take and how long you take with the boss fight stuff like that. But Generally, each one's about 45 minutes. This is so inconsistent. I have the first aid spray, but I would prefer not to use it if I don't have to. Almost missed that one too. <laughs> oh, Let's see, yeah, they like turn you around and stuff. Is I I reckon that doing this entire run no damage is probably impossible. I feel like it's impossible to play this game with no damage. There's times when you literally turn around, and even with something, you know, like a shotgun, which has a ton of stopping power, 
It just doesn't... It doesn't stop them. <laughs> they hit you anyway. Yeah, take Iridium's advice, Juicy. It's uh, it's one thing to come in and ask questions. It's another thing to try to like challenge my my knowledge of the lore and interrupt this amazing content that we're making here. And by amazing, I mean like totally subpar. <laughs> He's like, oh shit. You make me proud. Wesker? Tonight was an excellent night for collecting data on Umbrella's biological weaponry and its performance against trained flesh and blood combatants. You set the team up? Excellent deduction, Jill. That was Umbrella's intention anyway. However, I don't need them anymore. Yo, he's got Bluetooth. The ultimate life form. Tyrants. It's beautiful. It's magnificent. Oh, dude! Shit! Yeah, it's all right, Iridium. He debated you, but then he got fucking banned, bro. Oh, it's so cool getting banned in my chat, dude. No, how could they keep something like that here? I can't believe it. All of this was his doing. No time to worry about that now. We have to take this thing down. Well, I already took it down, dude. Wesker, a self-destruct device. Got banned because Hayes down. failed the quiz. <laughs> I didn't fail. He had more than one objective of being there. I think there's actually a file about it either. I don't remember if it's in Dark Side Chronicles, which we'll be playing after this, or if it's in... Uh, it might be in RE2 Classic, but you actually wouldn't find... Ah, I missed that file. Shit. Um, they actually don't explain that at all in the remake. Dark Side, the one with CVX, yeah. Yeah, Dark Side Chronicles is RE2, CVX, and there's like its own, it has its own campaign as well with Leon and Krauser. Sucks that I missed that file, but it's alright. Yo, I got plenty of shotgun shells. I'm at the heliport, but I'm running out of fuel. This is your last chance. Is anyone out there? The heliport. This way. How tall is Lady D? Uh, tall as fuck. Ding, 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 ding. Right answer. Oh my god, I'm so good.
The the troll tactics are actually so like predictable now. Like I knew when he came in that he was gonna do some trolling shit. And the main reason that I say that is because uh they always start by like trying to say something really nice about your stream just to like get you talking. This is where they control the power. And it's like a classic classic debate. Did I really lose my checkpoint all the way up until this point? Wow. Yo, this is like 10 minutes of gameplay. What the fuck, dude? Yeah, we got sent back all the way to the point when that dude started trolling me. Yeah, I mean, I guess it gives me another chance to get the file. That's fun, I guess. Good lord, the frame rate in this part of the game is so bad. Hey, I got the file this time. Do, 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 do. All right, I think I can maybe skip the cutscene. Yeah. Okay. Time to worry about that now. We have to take this thing down. Wesker. A self destruct device. We better get out of here now. Angel, good morning.
This is your last chance. Is anyone out there? The heliport. This way. Get him, dude. There we go. If there's one thing that I do kind of sort of... I got the file, thank God. There's one thing that I kind of sort of also wish about this game. Yeah, I know we've already kind of talked about the whole VR thing, but I also sort of wish that instead of like being on rails that there would be more stuff to explore. Like being able to freely run around. We're getting out of here. All right. But the team We have to save that for later. Let's get moving. This way, we can radio Brad for help. This entire game's auto scroller. With the exception of like actually some areas where you have to kill stuff, yeah. What the Persistent one, isn't he? We've got nowhere to run. We didn't come this far to die now. We need to take him out. It's not working. It must have a weakness. What is it? Good lord. Chris, use this. Kill that thing. Whatever it is. Yeah. 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 JJ It was near daybreak on July 25th when the incident at the mansion drew to a close. Except for Chris and a few others, 
the RPD stars were wiped out. All of the evidence of the event had vanished with the destruction of the mansion. For a brief moment, I felt the pain of coming death. However, this too was part of the plan. Nobody was aware of it, but I had been reborn. I cast off my frail humanity and became something greater. It, Dang, oh my God, dude! It's fucking Keanu Reeves. What the fuck? Got the MRL. Obtain Wesker report. Extract on the Tyrant plan. Obtain Tyrant T002 notes. The Digest 2. Raccoon's destruction. Rebirth is also available. Yeah. Three minutes on the clock. Three minutes on the clock. Pick the next scenario, chat. We got some files to read, so. So we have Wesker chapter two, where you find out what happens after, uh, or basically Wesker's escape from the mansion. We have Rebecca and Richard. Um, they have a scenario. It's a relatively short one, but um, we have that one. Or we can move on to RE3. In any case, we're going to do all of them, but it's up to you guys to determine which order it's going to be. So get your votes in, chat. What's it going to be? All the while, I'm going to read some files here. Wesker report. Extract on the Tyrant plan. Extracted from Wesker's report. A highly sophisticated fighting biological weapon with intelligence which would obey programmed orders and act as a soldier. That was the monster that we tried to create, and we called it the Tyrant. But from the beginning, there was one huge obstacle. It was almost impossible to obtain a living subject on which we could base the Tyrant. The supply of genetically adaptable human beings for the Tyrant was extremely limited. This is due to the nature of the T-Virus. The T-Virus variant, which was ideal to create the zombies and hunters, was suitable for most humans, but it had the fault of making the carrier's brain cells decline. To transform the, character, the carrier into a tyrant, we needed to keep the carrier's intelligence at a certain level. In order to overcome this issue, Birkin had been working on extracting a variant which would cause the least damage to the brain when it was adapted perfectly to the carrier. However, humans with a genetic match to this variant were extremely rare. The genetic analytic team simulation report told us that only 1 in 10 million would be infected and transformed into a tyrant, with the remainder becoming zombies. It might have been possible to develop a more progressive strain of the T-virus, which would transform more humans into tyrants. However, to push the research further, first of all, we required human subjects with a perfect genetic match to the new variant. There was little possibility that such a specimen would be supplied to us because even if we scoured the whole USA, we would only be able to find 50 or so of them. In fact, at that time, even with the utmost effort, we only managed to collect a few specimens with a close match. Even from the outset, our research was still at a standstill. Tyrant T002 Notes. A product of the Arclay Research Facility and the ultimate life form based on the male human body structure. Its combat prowess is at the pinnacle of BOWs and it is named after the virus which created it. It possesses the mental faculties to carry out orders and is extremely durable. There were still issues about the control mechanism, so combat data against real opponents was needed for making further improvements. If it senses that its life is in danger, it will remove its power limiter and transform into the even more powerful Super Tyrant. Resident Evil Digest 2. Jill and Chris made their way below the mansion and discovered Umbrella's high-tech research facility. 
They discovered Wesker in the cultivation chamber and learned that he was the traitor. As a former Umbrella researcher, he had seized the opportunity that the biohazard presented to lure them into the mansion and collect data on the effectiveness of the biological weaponry against highly trained soldiers. Wesker had also further plans to betray Umbrella. With the awesome power of the completed tyrant in his hands, he has no longer he no longer needed to follow the orders of others. However, upon releasing the tyrant, it lashed out and pierced Wesker's body with its, with its giant claw. The tyrant pursued Jill and Chris while in the background, a self-destructing mechanism had been initiated. The pair made contact with Brad, Alpha's helicopter pilot, and fled to the helipad to escape. The tyrant followed in pursuit and began to draw closer with each step. All right. All right, Wesker Chapter 2 is the winner. So here we go. I died once. I will never forget the cold, dark fingers of death reaching out for me. However, even that death was a necessary component of the big picture. The virus that Bergen had created brought me back from the brink of annihilation. When I awoke, hatred became my master. I found the tyrant that killed me was dead, and the facility was just moments away from self-destruction. I did not have time to enjoy my newfound life. I had something I needed to do. Time to grab the data and get out. Due to the emergency condition, all data has been Welcome back, Nikita. to the UNF-013. Sergei was busy. Wesker, Albert, I am afraid that as of 2400 hours, I have taken it upon my authority to rebook your access privileges to the mainframe system. Impossible. Who are you? I am Red Queen. My primary objective is the management and protection of Umbrella assets. My secondary mission objective you will regret is the protection this, my lady. of Umbrella that, officer I lives. promise. Oh, shit. Time to change the plan. I better secure my escape. Then I will deal with them. Sergey, I won't hey. forget your kind. Hey. How are you going to leave me a file like that? They put the file there. I died once. Yeah, 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 yeah. I will never forget the cold, dark... Time to change the plan. I better secure my escape. Then I will deal with them. Sergey, I won't forget your kindness. It's time to take the virus for a test drive. Not bad. Not bad at all. No, it's very bad. It's very, very bad. Enjoy your food, my dude.
Ah! I missed an herb. Uh, there are two, Samael. There's this one, and then there's Dark Side Chronicles. survive long enough for us to have our tear-filled reunion. <laughs> A tear-filled reunion. I don't know why, but Wesker's chapters always seem like really difficult. I just needed to do that as more of a safety measure than anything else. What is Dead Aim considered? Um, it's like a hybrid between third and first person. You, I thought we disposed of you. Oh! Dude. She was literally at zero health. Come on, man. I'm probably gonna have to Time go back to, to change the plan. Fuck. I better secure my escape. Of course. Then I will deal with them. Have to do this yeah, whole goddamn I section all over again. Kindness. It's time to take the virus for a Even test. She was at zero like fucking I'm health. Not shit. bad at all. So I'm saying, like, I feel like. Wesker's sections are like so much harder than the other ones. Oh, dude, I had to have been close. that noise is all about, but okay. Gosh, it's so frustrating having to replay, like, long sections. <laughs> what amazing power. What amazing. It's amazing.
go. Oh, that's the same way I went last time. I'm just kidding. What the fuck? Where is my shotgun? Jesus. I feel like I tabbed over like 12 damn times. And it wasn't there. Frame rate's so bad. You survive long enough for us to have our tear-filled reunion. <laughs> like, like seriously, I feel like these chimeras didn't take as much to kill. Good lord, man. You. I thought we disposed of you. Nobody's perfect. Not even you, Lisa. This is probably the checkpoint right here. Wow, there's not even a checkpoint on that, dude. A letter to someone. There was literally no checkpoint in that. Whatever, dude. Assault shotgun, not really that good. with firepower. Hmm. Well, hold on a second here, because I think I've got enough stars to maybe customize some stuff, but let's read this file real quick. A letter to someone. To my Lisa, day by day, I can feel my consciousness drifting further away. The shots given to me by the men in white clothes made some of mommy's itching go away. Today, they gave me another shot, saying it was nutrition. When they give me the shots, Mommy can think straight, but Mommy's shocked and sad because Mommy is unable to think of you all the time. Mommy's afraid, afraid of forgetting everything, especially the memories of you and Daddy. What your faces look like, how we used to be together. 
They're all starting to disappear into somewhere dark in my mind. Oh, Lisa, I wish I could touch your face and hold you in my arms right now so that I can hold on to the wonderful memories of you and Daddy. Lisa, we can't stay here any longer. We have to escape. Listen to me, Lisa. Our chance to escape is the next time we go to that lab together. We'll both pretend that we're unconscious, and when that man in white clothes is off guard, that will be our chance. When we're on the outside, let's look for Daddy together. Okay, sweetie? Be strong, Lisa. November 13th, 1967. Jessica Trevor. I don't think there's any other notes. All right. Customize. How many stars do I have? I have five. Hmm. That's not really enough to upgrade much of anything. So that's ammo increase. Ammo increase. I don't know. I feel like I don't really have enough stars to do anything that is of much use there, so it's all good. All right, let's do Rebirth 2, and then we'll go move on to another chapter. Minutes remained until the entire building was engulfed in flame. Wesker avoided the fatal grasp of Lisa Trevor, the one who would not die, and reached the entrance. He was only a few feet away from safety, while well, safely escaping the explosion. The exit should be close. The hourglass is running low. Time to pick up the pace. Stubborn is Lisa Trevor. No time to play. I need to find another route. Look at this shit, dude. They don't die. She must like me. Yeah, did I kill him in one shot with a pistol? Oh, this game is ridiculous sometimes, dude. Oh my god, look, a checkpoint. Sure would have been nice to have that checkpoint in the first stage. You know?
my god, dude. This is ridiculous. This is super fucking shitty. I have no bullets. God damn it, dude. Good lord. Why? Just like nothing but cheap shots, dude. This scenario is ridiculous. Hey, Trey, what's up, buddy? Appreciate the raid, homie. Welcome in, everybody, from Trey's stream. My name is Hazeblade. Professional Resident Evil streamer slash speedrunner. And uh, we are playing Dark Side Chronicles today, which is a super, super annoying game. No, it's actually super fun, uh, but the Wesker scenarios are actually kind of annoying. Dude, I wish that there was like one green herb over here. Yeah, take it easy. Go get you some food, my dude. Thank you again for the raid, buddy. She appears to be stalking me. Your desire for eternal slumber shall be granted. God damn it. Stay dead this time. Shit. Oh. 
fair. My ass, bitch. Exactly. And so I was reborn like a phoenix emerging from the flame. I no longer needed umbrella. A new horizon stretched out before me. I had risen beyond the human race and cheated death itself, leaving nothing to oppose me. No, I don't know about nothing, but you know. Yo, JJ. Alright, three minutes. Which scenario are we doing next? We have quite a few files to read, so... Ooh, looking fly over there, Wesker. Looking fly. I have eight stars. So this is the higher attack power gun of the two. All right. Probably work on the, the HP. Let's read some files. Let's see. These three shiny gemstones could be placed in certain boxes or statues. Is that right? All right, a few files here. Family picture. There's something written on the back. Progenitor virus administered November 10th, 1967. Jessica administered virus type A, plasmalizing of tissue during cell activation. Virus fusion negative, action disposed. Lisa administered virus type B, plasmalizing of tissue during cell activation. Virus fusion positive, but delayed fusion. Body modification, observed constant results, status continue protective observation. George action terminated November 30th, 1967. Trevor Family Notes. The family of George Trevor, the brilliant architect who designed and oversaw the construction of the Arthur Mansion. The construction of the mansion took five years, and when it was complete, Spencer decided that George knew too much. He was imprisoned within the mansion while his wife Jessica and daughter Lisa were subjected to viral experiments. Jessica was deemed incompatible and disposed of, while George found himself trapped in the product of his own design. The Trevor family became the first victims of Spencer's blind ambition. Lisa Trevor's profile. She was imprisoned for nearly 30 years in the mansion and subjected to continual experiments that transfigured her into a monster. Numerous viral experiments made her immune to death itself and soon led Birkin to the discovery of the G-Virus. Lisa has the disturbing trait of peeling faces from her victims and placing them over her own. There were repeated attempts to dispose of her, but they all failed. She was eventually bound and left to wander the halls of the mansion. So yeah, if you look back at this, it specifically says that the experiments that um, were performed on her actually led to um, the G-Virus's development. So she actually has like a lot of the origin strains of the viral components that would ultimately make the G-Virus. And I think you actually don't even learn about that in RE1. It's specifically addressed in this game, which is kind of interesting. All right, RE3-1. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back to Rebecca and Richard's scenario uh, a little bit later on. 
She's patient zero. Yep. Indeed. Raccoon City was a town under the thumb of Umbrella. The virus washed over the city like a tidal wave, and in its wake left a living hell filled with ungodly creatures. Umbrella, under the guise of helping the hapless citizen, sent in their private military, the UBCS security force. Jill Valentine, a member of STARS, finds herself still trapped in the nightmare she thought she left behind with the mansion incident. September 28th, 1998. September 28th, daylight, right? Gosh, at least buy me dinner first. Some good shooting. We've got to get out of here. A rescue chopper's on its way. Come with me. Let's roll. This area looks so familiar. I wonder what game it's from. Take that. Ah. They use so many outbreak assets in this part. Yep, this is right outside a Jay's bar. I'm a member of Stars. The name's Jill Valentine. Stars? No wonder. So you're yeah. pretty elite then. And you are? I'm Carlos. Corporal Carlos Oliveira. I've been using a gun since I was a kid. So you're safe as long Dude, as Dude, I freaking did the thing, you jerk. Yeah, these are a lot of the same zombie models. That staircase right here is where the survivors and outbreak come out. Oh god. Already off to a great start with this game, dude. Or with this scenario. I'm a member of STARS. The name's Jill Valentine. STARS? No wonder. So you're pretty elite then. And you are? I'm Carlos. Corporal Carlos Oliveira. I've been using a gun since I was a kid. So you're safe as long as you stick with me. Oh, it's all has gone.
so many of them. We're screwed. That's a death animation from RE4. God, they reused so many assets in this game. It's actually crazy to think that all of these games were made in the same engine. Could imagine playing with this controller. Dude, it's a lot more difficult. That's another RE4 animation. missed it. <laughs> Where have we seen this Something's location before? There. Yeah, I wonder. This way. Down there, jump for it. period of time I thought this was the only remake we were ever gonna get of RE3 and it's hardly even a remake like there's like hard there I'm pretty sure there's no locations in this maybe with the exception of like a very small part of the RPD that's actually an RE3 none of this is an RE3 at all Look, it's the Apple Inn. Very nice. Guys, I feel like we were just here. I need to do 
to just this to stop acting like this, but I swear the input registration in this game is just completely jacked up. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. How's it going, buddy? We have to keep going. Oh, there's more. Oh. Made it to a checkpoint, thank God. <laughs> this is rough, dude. Two ways to go. Let's go this way. The other way is just more outbreak bullshit. This is actually like some semi different territory. I mean, not really, but it's basically where you kill Nyx in File 2. The other area is just more of the street area where, like, you kill Super Tyrant and all of that. Keep behind cover. We were too late to help. Turns out the cover didn't even matter, dude. Because guess what? He broke through the barrier and everything went to shit from there.
Up there. Got it. Leave it to me. Very nice. Yeah, ish. I mean, it's almost, it's basically just a giant map of the two scenarios. Basically, Outbreak and, Outbreak and, um, End of the Road. It's literally just entirely comprised of assets from that. Hey look, guess what? More outbreak shit. Focus on one at a time. Yeah, got it.
Are you with them? No, I never had like yeah. uh well, I had it on the Wii at one point, but civilians. But the mission went bad the minute we landed. Save us. It's Umbrella's fault that all of this happened in the first place. Hey, hey, easy, Chica. I'm just a hired gun. Uh, uh... Really Look, lady? even this shit had ah. Gravedigger in it. <laughs> I bet it's not so hard inside. That's, that's, that came out very wrong, Jill. That's, that's just cringe, you know? He chucked a bus at me, dude. This fight is so fucking obnoxious. This fight is just like overly obnoxious.
Got him. But yeah, Revelations is good, Chaka. The raccoon scenarios are actually kind of long. Yeah, the Nemi one is, that's not until the third chapter, but yeah. Here, I'll be Carlos this time. I usually find these types of weapons out there, so let me see if I can maybe pull up a different kind of weapon and maybe I'll get lucky. I would love to hydrate, but I don't have any water or anything on me right now. I'll grab some more after the scenario is over. Jill and Carlos hurried to the police station where the rescue helicopter would arrive. The city was doomed to annihilation, and there were no discernible routes out of the forsaken town. However, Jill knew Raccoon City, and she had a plan. I really didn't know Umbrella was behind this. We have to let the world know what happened. Yeah, but first, we have to make it out of here alive. We can go through here to get to the police station. Well, let's go, dude. Hey, look, more Outbreak stuff. Ooh, the handgun SG. This can't be good. Oh! Oh, whoops. Maybe we can use an explosion to our advantage. Someone's in there. Too late. We're too late. Hey, look, it's Amelia. <laughs> My life is shit. That survivor actually does have a name. Her name is Amelia. She's actually a playable character in, uh, Outbreak. But yes, I should say that there are many. I think there actually is somewhere. I think it's on like fandom or something that actually declares her death there as canon. Well, we'll just have to be that much more careful. Careful where you walk. I will. Uh. 
Oh! Oh! Yeah, they pretty much. This whole scenario is all just like shit stolen from Outbreak. I can't pick up the thing because it's like. There it is. Alright. These must have been the passengers. They were, but they're not human anymore. Oh! Oh! I'm literally throwing the fucking sticks as hard as I possibly can here. Checkpoint! Yay! Alright, let's move on. Yep, they, they take a short little break every time they... Well, shit! This one's not like the others. Must be an umbrella experiment. Here it comes! What's even like more depressing about this game is that they use the freaking Outbreak liquors, man. Like they're like probably the most poorly designed liquors in the entire franchise. They look like absolute fucking garbage.
Hey look, more outbreak shit. <laughs> Wish I had a big can of bug spray. Guess we'll just have to deal with it. Sorry, right, we can just knife it all. There's so many hunters down here too, it's ridiculous. in groups. I feel trapped like a rat. I mean, I killed them all. You don't have to feel like you're trapped or anything. I mean... They're gonna bring the pain, dude. Damn. Damn. the end of the scenario there's like no escape from there but like that's just the end of the scenario like <laughs> doesn't make any damn sense all right let's read some files here september 28th UBCS notes, the Umbrella Biohazard Countermeasure Service, or UBCS, is a private military group operated by Umbrella. They exist primarily to control the disasters caused by Umbrella's products and are always first on the scene of any accident. Because of the dangerous nature of this work, many of the members are war criminals, refugees, or others recruited with the promise of being pardoned from life de uh, sentences, from death sentences or life imprisonment. These soldiers often come from the armies of communist countries and possess a solid military background. Raccoon City Notes. An industrialized city located in the American Midwest. The city is surrounded by nature with an expansive forest to the north and plentiful fresh water supplies. Raccoon City boasts a population of 100,000 people, classifying it as a mid-sized city. The city successfully attracted investment from the multinational corporation Umbrella and soon grew to become an industrialized company town with nearly a third of the population directly employed by Umbrella. Reporter's Memo. At last, I have found the evidence I need to prove that the cannibal disease is indeed present in the city. I've witnessed it with my own eyes. I saw one man actually eating another. He behaved like a savage beast, tearing flesh from bone. 
It was horrifying. I have heard rumors that numerous people now suffer from this disease. The cause, however, remains a mystery. I must look into this further. The government has placed Raccoon City under martial law to prevent the spread of the disease. Due to this, I have lost contact with the media outside of the city. But I'm not giving up yet. As a journalist, I have a duty to the people and to my profession. From what I have gathered, the disease has not spread nationwide yet. It is my belief that this city holds the key to the creation of the disease and its cure. The military has set up blockades around the city to keep people from escaping and spreading the disease. Most of the citizens of this once great city are now either dead or infected. I know that this is the right decision to quarantine the city, but I can't help but feel sorry for myself. Will I be infected or eaten? I suppose it doesn't matter. My fate has already been sealed. All I have left is my work. I won't give up until I solve the mystery of this deadly disease. I have already discovered that it is not an airborne strain, but is spread by some other means. Ivy Notes. Officially named Plant 43, this BOW was developed by analyzing data from Plant 42 that had appeared in the mansion. It inherits the blood-sucking capabilities of Plant 42 while demonstrating new traits such as the ability to move on its own and attacking prey with its two vine-like appendages. It also has the ability to spit digestive enzymes from its flower-like head section to deliver a fatal blow to prey. Its movements are plotting, most likely due to the slow hydraulic forces it employs for locomotion. Alright. Do I have enough to upgrade some other stuff? I do. Alright, up next. Part 3. We'll be playing as Ms. Jill Valentine. I'm actually going to save ammo in this for right now. Keep rolling with the magnum here. Making their way through an underground tunnel, Jill and Carlos finally reached the police station. They climbed to the roof and waited for the arrival of the rescue helicopter. Something had been observing their progress. Oh. What? Shit. All right, I'll hurry up. Listen. At dawn, this town is going to be destroyed by a missile. They're going to wipe out the town? We don't have much time. Let's move. They're going to wipe out the town. We have to get to the roof. Come on. This way. I don't think we'll make it through there. What now? That's what grenades are for, Jill. I do think it's badass that they brought Nemesis back in this game, though. Have to find some way to stop him. I don't think it matters how much lead we pump into him. Be careful. 
We need to find something with a little more kick. We've got it now. Oh, look. Grenades that just spawned in out of nowhere. Yeah, far away as possible. Nemesis and VR? Come on, guys. Seriously. Let's use that. Now's our chance. They're here, too. He's quite a persistent guy. You should be more careful about who you date. This is no time for jokes. We've got to run. Hey, guess what? This RPD was stolen from Outbreak as well. <laughs> They literally constructed this scenario entirely out of Outbreak assets. Like, a hundred percent. Like, Jill and OG RE3, she goes to the other side of the police station. You can't even get to this part of the police station in RE3 Classic. Or an RE3 Remake, for that matter. They're just like, yeah, we'll use whatever resources we got on hand. It's whatever. tell from the terrible liquor models yeah Stars! he's back always oh, got a rocket launcher there's a room let's hide there Because, you know, he's totally not going to hear you or anything. No, they're not pale heads. They're just... Nemi's still going through puberty. Yeah, dude. I think so too. That what voice line with us anyway? literally makes no sense.
It's him! This guy won't stop. I admire his determination. This whole scenario is just an entire, like, just a one you know massive, I know this city like the back of my hand. one massive kite I'll fest. Like, hey, we started at the front gate, or at the front, you know, main hall, now we're right at the front gate again. All over again. And guess what? You can also crawl through that crevice in the outbreak. <laughs> Good lord. God damn it, dude. Get to the roof. Right. What is the UBCS thinking? I'm too far down on the chain of command. They wouldn't tell a higher level about something like this. I can't believe they're going to destroy the entire town. It must be serious if it's come to that. You must have a secret they want to keep hidden. A secret? I don't know, and I don't care what it is. I don't even care about the money I was promised. I just know we need to hurry up and get the hell out of this place. I hope there's freaking health up here, man. Hey. carrying trouble. We need to destroy that weapon. How can we take that thing out? God damn it. like that did the trick even he couldn't survive that ah that's not true <laughs>
Would have been really nice to have a fast for the fight here, but... No worries, Brooke. Uh, it's going well so far. We are just wrapping up the RE3 scenario. in the way. It's using its tentacles. God damn it. God damn it. Dude, what the fuck? Shut up about the tentacles for two seconds. <laughs> Jay, Jay. There it is. Uh, all those 
those people. Rip. Rip Raccoon City. Thus, Raccoon City vanished from the map. Hey, look, even However, an outbreak FMV. Nice. Not everything disappeared with the town's annihilation. The nightmare would continue over the next few years as the survivors fought on. Umbrellas and one available. So long, RC. Yeah. RC. the name of this scenario called? Let's see. Umbrella's End. Alright. Get your votes in. Alright. Let's see. Did I get any new files? I don't know. I think I did. RPD Notes. The Raccoon City Police Department led by Chief Brian Irons. Brian is deeply connected to Umbrella, who had been working with him behind the scenes. RPD includes the special unit STARS and is outfitted with far more technology than appropriate for such a small city thanks to generous donations from Umbrella. The police station itself was also filled with expensive art pieces and resembled a museum more than a station. The brave officers of the RPD did what they could for the citizens of Raccoon City in the face of the spreading T-virus, but with their chief gone mad and giving them confusing orders, they could not pull it together and were eventually wiped out despite having some of the nation's finest. Yeah, there's actually a whole sequence with uh, Rebecca and Richard. There's two, um, two chapters here in the mansion incident that we haven't done yet. But I'm letting, as we start to unlock like branches of scenarios and stuff, I'm letting chat vote on what they think should come next. So if we end up like doing that one at the end or whatever, like it's not a big deal. I want, I want chat to pick the, the order that we do stuff. So one of the perks of watching the run live on Twitch versus the YouTube upload is that you get to kind of influence decisions and stuff a little bit. So yeah, I don't have enough stars for any other upgrades. The submachine gun HP, though, is, is pretty nice. But we do have a few different chapters left. We have, um, we have Nightmare 1 and 2 with Rebecca and Richard. And then we have Umbrella's End, which is three chapters, and then there's another Wesker sequence after that, so. So right now it's looking like Rebecca and Richard is gonna win. If that's the case, then it'll be Rebecca and Richard, followed by Umbrella's End, followed by uh, Wesker's scenario. Um. If it, if Umbrella's End wins, then we'll put it up to a vote to go between Rebecca, Richard, or um, Wesker. All depends on who wins. Right now, it's looking like it'll be Rebecca and Richard, though. All right, here we go. Back to the mansion incident.
After splitting up with Billy, I went to the mansion where Bravo Team was to rendezvous. When I arrived, I found that none of the others were there, and the mansion was unsettlingly quiet. I was exhausted from the events of the previous day, and before I knew it, I had drifted into a nightmare. This this cutscene is probably one of the coolest cutscenes like that. I I actually really like the psychological component of some of the You're okay? Some of the games brings to it. I'm fine. We were fighting some monster and Edward's dead. I see. It's not much better on my end either. We got attacked by those things and had to split up. The rest of the team is either in hiding or... or... We just have to find Enrico. He'll know what to do. <laughs> what a horrible first assignment, huh? First, we have to get to someplace safe. All right. <laughs> Where could the captain be? It's Enrico. I'm sure he's fine. Really? Cheap. Hey, Stark, what's up, buddy? Oh, God! I didn't even see the damn dog, dude. Spiders are everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. We made it. Not yet, we haven't. Good Lord.
Seriously? Like, it's, uh, it's fine that I have a fast or whatever, but, like, I'd really prefer to not use it in the first, you know, two minutes of the scenario. And I'm actually trying to only take this weapon with me in order to stockpile. And that's obviously not fucking working. Super dad dud. Let's go down then. Some great spider AI there, yeah. Hey, we we should be able to get back above ground. <sighs> Finally. Little do they know, Enrico's actually on that door. He's in that door to the left, dude. You missed it, shit. bro.
What? Grenade! Oh, thank God. What a waste of ammo to just deal with a bunch of little spiders, you know? Okay. Oh, it's incredibly clunky, dude. It's it's one thing it's one thing on like with, with you know the motion controls and everything. It's it's actually pretty smooth if you're using like a PlayStation Move or a Wiimote, but PlayStation 3 controller, no, it's not fun at all. And there's like no settings to change the sensitivity of the stick either. And because of the incredibly low frame rate that this game runs on, it's far too easy for... There's too many. What can we do? It's just far too easy for things to just go really bad. Going in. The other place was filled with them too. It's easier to mount a defense in a building. There might be survivors. JJ. I only got one file, therefore I gotta be rank. Rip dude. Edward Dewey profile. This scenario is actually really, really hard. I'm gonna bring the Magnum with me.
Richard and Rebecca return to the now silent mansion, holding on to hope the two commence their search for survivors. We made it to the well, mansion. Not Let's stay on your toes. But, you know. I will, Billy. I hope you're okay. Damn, they're here too. Okay? You don't look so good. I'm all right. I must have had a bad dream. What? Uh, nothing. Good lord. It's gonna be a long night. Something feels wrong. Richard. Hey, don't forget, we're elite members of STARS. If we remember our training and keep our cool, we'll be fine. Yeah, you're right. We'll be fine. Obviously, Richard doesn't keep his cool, but you know. are going from bad to worse. We have to find him. Rebecca, watch out! <laughs> thought that there was a... Hey, stay with me. We'll make it through this. Huh. Thank God for the herb. It won't budge. Damn. I thought we'd finally made it. Well, looks like we'll have to find another way. God damn it, these guys suck ass. You know all those bizarre accidents that have been happening lately? Yeah, you don't have to say it. I know they're related to this too. These were not ordinary murders. There's something more going on here. We have to get to the bottom of it. Our main mission now is survival. Having all the information in the world won't do us any good if we're dead. I know, but... Don't worry, Rebecca. We'll expose all of this. But for right now, we have to focus on our job. You gotta focus on the jab. You gotta go in there, focus up, and get the jab done. Alright? You guys already fucking know, though. Good lord.
Who's that? They're going into the forest. Unbelievable. I wonder what they could be up to. I forgot about this cutscene. I don't even remember who's in, like, the body bag. Let's move. Yeah. I don't I don't know if they explain who's in the body bag. I'm not sure. Well, at least we get a little checkpoint going on here, you know? dead I probably should just die since the checkpoints like right here okay, let's see what happens I'm already close to death anyway there somewhere so don't give up hope besides I'll back you up <laughs> and with me around what could go wrong okay come on why do you guys got to do that shit The, the typical, oh, what could go wrong? Did you get it? Come on, let's get out of here. Gotcha, nice. But yeah, I think I remember in the Wesker scenario for RD0, it talks about it now. Did you get it? Come on, let's get out of here. I don't think you're running past that, my dude. Oh! There's a file there. God dang it.
Oh, well. Most of the files are already in the games anyway, and we've read them in our casual playthroughs of those, so... Finish it off, Rebecca. I'm with you. It went up. Oh, I forgot about that bullshit. We'll make it through this. So, dude, this fight is so dumb, dude. This fight is literally just like completely full of cheap fucking shots. Let's finish it off, Rebecca. I'm with you. God damn it, dude. fight is just completely full of cheap shots, man. See? There we go. At least we got it. Thank goodness. Oh. 
scared. She's covered in blood, dude. Got messed up. I messed up good. Some backup I made. Richard. Don't make that face at me. We've still got to have hope. Someone will come and rescue us. I, I know it. Aww. He's not doing so hot, chat. It's rough. I hated how hopeless I felt. Seeing Richard lying there, wounded. I had to be stronger. I had to fight. And I had to survive. No matter what happened. I'll prove I have what it takes to survive. The art in that scene is really cool, too. All right. Got the Magnum Revolver. The last book, volume one and two. Sealed letter to Sergei Vladimir. Got some files to look through here. The archive, right? Ba -ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba. All right, let's see. July 24th. We got our cylinder. Oops. Metals hidden in these red and blue cover books. Edward Dewey profile. A member of Star's Bravo team. He is the RE, or rear security. For the team, and although he normally serves as the main pilot, he acted as co-pilot to Kevin Dooley for the Raccoon Forest mission. After the helicopter crash landed, he discovered the Ecliptic Express and looked around inside, only to be bitten by a zombie, making him the first star's victim. Sealed letter to Sergei Vladimir. Dear Colonel, it has been so long since we last met. Has summer come to Russia yet? I realize it is sudden, but a I have a request that only you can handle, old friend. You already know from the television conference the other day that a response to the incident at Arclay has been ordered. The mail calling for the X-Day procedure has already been sent. There are stirrings behind closed doors calling for a disposal of the entire facility. However, I just cannot help but feel it is a waste. What with our guardian of Crete? I apologize for having to make this request of you, but could you fly to Raccoon and cover the, recover the prototype for me? There's a cause for the urgency of this request. Hidden forces are at work trying to back me into a corner. I suspect there is more to the virus outbreak and other various incidents than is suspected. The company has decided to destroy any evidence implicating their involvement. In the current circumstances, I fear that any correspondence sent by traditional means would be monitored, and so I sealed this message. Umbrella is embroiled in a dangerous situation, and these are dangerous times. This is when those who would take advantage of such misfortune will begin to emerge. You've always been our loyal cleaner, and at the time, at, and the time when your services are needed have come again. Happy hunting. Unsigned, but stamped by an old seal. Uh, this is zero, one, and three, as well as its own, like, it has its own campaign with it, too, which we're about to start playing. Uh, sorry guys, my I'm doing a terrible job reading these files. The font in this is so bad. Like it's legible, but it's like the way the spacing and stuff is makes it really difficult to read sometimes. All right, let's see. Let's fire it up, dude. Umbrella stock plummeted with government inquiries into their involvement in the Raccoon City incident. Before long, 
they were able to redirect responsibility for the incident. Part of the blame was cleverly shifted to the American government. Umbrella had strong ties and deep pockets. Thus, they were able to drag out the legal proceedings. Over time, it appeared that all evidence of Umbrella's involvement had vanished with the missile touchdown. How convenient for them. Though fortune has a way of turning. So this is expected. actually a scene that plays out only during this game, but it gives you some context into how Umbrella actually in fell Russia, after the they were Raccoon City incident. BOW. They were preparing to arm the unstable regions of the world with their bioweaponry. Chris and Jill had joined a regional biohazard containment unit and had heard rumors about this nightmarish facility. They recklessly plunged in to shut it down. They have no idea of the awesome and terrible power that awaits them with the new B.O.W. Talos. Shit. Everybody prepare for landing. Stay on guard. We can't afford any mistakes. Yeah, I don't even they just refer to it in this game as like a private biohazard containment unit, but I think this is ultimately gonna be I, I'm not sure if this is actually the BSAA or if it's a separate thing. We'll just take out whatever they throw at us. Come on, let me take the goddamn fast, dude. Seriously. This is why I really don't like the auto aim in this. Like, it prevents you from picking up shit that's like Umbrella actually pretty plummet. fucking important. BOW straight ahead. Like stay on guard. I'm about to get like a billion different kinds of weapons in this scenario.
Dude, I'm literally throwing the damn stick as hard as I fucking can. And I'm still getting hit. Like, I don't understand. like inside there could be anything in there we can infiltrate down below or secure the stairs we'll go down below it's dark stay on your toes i'm not a big fan of the outside area using up the shotgun shells, but... God, the frame rate is so bad, dude.
I missed whatever was in that compartment, but it's okay. I think it's just one pack of ammo. So many just like I when I run out of ammo in one shotgun, I get it right back in another one. It's kind of funny. This is the place. section is actually quite tough. <clears throat> oh. Wonder who is controlling that. come from they're all over I am in rough shape God damn it. I don't know where the checkpoint is, dude. I don't remember where it is, but it's probably not fucking close. Okay, not that bad, not that bad. Where'd they come from? They're Thank God. Jump over.
they all come from? We're getting surrounded. We have to fall back. You're right. Run for it. Get them a little closer first, and boom. Hey! Really, dude? I'm gonna miss that file because of this shit. Damn it. Bronson. Chris, we can't let his death be in vain. All right. Let's see this through. Right. Let's go. So many of them. What's with this place? We'll have to check it out. That section is hard as shit. So many hunters, dude. I feel like if you don't have grenades or shotguns, Chris, you're just ruined on that part floor. of the level. Yeah, I noticed. Abandon hope. The nightmare ends here and now. Automatic pistol, Raccoon City Judgment, Talos Project Proposal. Or Talos, sorry. Obtained eradication operation notes. Umbrellas end numero dos. How many total chapters are there? There's five there. Seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve. Uh, 13, 14, 15. I don't know what this one is. Looks like about 20. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Yeah, seems like there's supposed to be something there, but I don't know. You're pretty good. We'll do Jill this time. The automatic pistol is nice, but I think I'm gonna opt for something else. Like, I kinda want a grenade launcher, but at the same time, like. Nah, I'm gonna need a shotgun for sure. I'll grab the shotty. Slightly more upgraded than the other one. The concealed elevator led to a point hundreds of yards beneath the Earth's surface. To an imposing facility designed with the exclusive purpose of mass producing BOWs. Up to their old tricks, I see. They've got their sticky fingers in every pot. This thing sure goes down deep. It's starting to look like the right place. We've only just recently learned about this place. I'm willing to bet it's hiding something important. Yeah, they wouldn't build all this for nothing. From the size of the facility, it's obviously not just some warehouse.
Good lord! You're just like dodging all my shit here. Give me the goddamn ammo, dude. I didn't see a fast anywhere, but I'm not sure if I just missed it or I'm not sure what's going on. about a new BOW. I'm not sure. I'm not. Oh, thank think God. We'll find out soon enough. Thank God, I almost missed it. This area, I feel like, takes so much inspiration from the movie. Which is actually quite upsetting. Because they have nothing to do with each other. I love our choices. Either way, we have to keep going. Yeah, we'll go this way. So fast. If we follow, we're as good as dead. This space is like almost... It reminds me very heavily of the, the hive from... Um, the first movie. Containers are getting moved. What's in them? We better check them out. Fire! Why are they destroying them? This must be a disposal facility. What the? Why would they destroy their own products? So anything that doesn't pass the test gets toasted. Look, the container! It's still alive! I gotta be careful, I'm already running dangerously low on ammo. Oh, 
Really? At least I got a checkpoint, and I still got my fast. Ha, huh, thank God. Watch, I'm just going to get absolutely wrecked in the second half. <laughs> Alright, at least I got some replen here. how they just like don't pay attention to anything that's happening on their radio like oh maybe we should help these people sounds like they were all sent in to die so that way Jill and Chris could breach the facility and create a suitable diversion it's getting away not if we can help it This many of them, we must be getting close. It's the final stretch. Let's move it. Let's move it. Oh my god, if it isn't a direct carbon copy of the scene from the movie. Good lord. The fact that they even, like, decided to, like, create some sort of, like, correlation with the movie. I'm so mad. It makes me really mad. Huh? The security system's active? That must mean we're getting close to something important. We can't get through.
Yeah, that is true. They did use the laser sequence in Marie. This, that, um, that room though is like a carbon copy from the movie though. The the RE4 one is like original assets and stuff. Doesn't even really look like the same room. But yeah, this is like a fucking carbon copy. God damn, I swear to God, they purposefully overwhelm you to do this shit, man. Like, they overwhelm you so fast. It doesn't matter what kind of fucking weapons you have. <laughs> yeah, he flew back a little bit there, dude. How many of these things are there? Looks like they build up quite an inventory. I made it to the end of the scenario. <laughs> Gosh, that gets so fucking frustrating, dude. Alright, let's read some files here. Raccoon City Judgment. After the Raccoon City incident, the U.S. government issued an order for Umbrella to cease and desist all operations. In response, Oswell E. Spencer hired the best lawyers money could buy and prepared false, witness, false witnesses to try and create the appearance of a conspiracy with which to turn the public opinion away from Umbrella and toward the government. Survivors of the incident presented their testimonies, but the lack of evidence, most of which had been wiped out in the eradication operation, and the withholding of testimony by government employees who feared being implicated made the case drag on without a conclusion. Talos Project Proposal. Next Generation BOW Proposal. Arclay BOW Research Team. The success of the T002 Tyrant Experiment has shown us that progress towards a marketable humanoid BOW is moving along nicely. However, we must strive to continue the research and development of cutting-edge products to satisfy the varying needs of our clients. 
The plan our team proposes is as follows. One, tuning control synapse connector. The current risk with deployment of T-virus based weaponry is the lack of control. Sudden cellular mutations can result in the halting of functionality, impairment of judgment, and the various other conditions reported in the past. In order to enable safe transport and deployment of this weaponry, a more stable solution is essential. Our sixth research lab in Europe has discovered one method of control by using organic parasites. We would like to pursue a more consistent result by using chip connections to brain cells. We are in the final stages of testing and feel confident in the likelihood of product realization. Two, enhancement of combat functionality for land-based weaponry. The Tyrant boasts a combat prowess of survivability that far surpasses that of even the best trained combat troops. However, it is still only theoretically capable of successfully deterring roughly one military division. When facing AFVs or military-grade helicopters, its kill ratio begins to falter. By arming the tyrant with specialized combat firepower and armor, it will become more fit for the variety of situations it is likely to face in the field. In the past, the ideal has been to leave the tyrant unhindered by additional equipment so that it can maximize its two strong points, motor performance and response reflexes. However, the use of enhanced armor modules, internal reinforcement implants, long distance homing weaponry, etc. could preserve the natural abilities of the tyrant while maximizing its options in field maneuvers. The potential for this enhancement is fast becoming a reality. When complete, it could make the Tyrant the ultimate all-in-one combat package. The fucking package, dude. So that when they were talking about parasites and stuff, they were alluding to Nemesis in that file. Eradication Operation Notes. Even after the mansion incident had ended, the cannibal disease, T-Virus, has spread to Raccoon City, plunging it into a state of panic. The city was quarantined while RPD officers and UBCS soldiers attempted to rescue its citizens. The situation grew more and more desperate, and the possibility of the virus spreading beyond the quarantine was growing. The U.S. government was concerned and called a nationwide conference to discuss the next step. They formulated a plan for the complete eradication of the city. In compliance on October 1st, 1998, the military launched a strategic missile into the heart of the city. Raccoon City with its 100,000 inhabitants, was forever wiped from the face of the earth. Simulated battle data. Talos, simulated battle results. Top secret. Case 12. Talos versus 1. Special Forces Unit. 12 soldiers, former Spetsnaz. Time elapsed. 3 minutes, 28 seconds. Kill ratio, 100 to 0. Which doesn't make sense. Because there's 12 soldiers, so the kill ratio would be 12 and 0, but... Unless they're basing it off of a percentage, but I don't know, that's kind of weird. Case 13, Talos. Versus armored vehicles. Two vehicles. Time elapsed. 6 minutes, 40 seconds. Kill ratio, 89 to 2. Case 14, Talos versus attack helicopter. One helicopter. Time elapsed, 3... 32 minutes, 13 seconds. Kill ratio, 48 to 10. Ah, okay. I see what they're doing now. I see. Richard Eichen's letter. Dear Bridget. I feel like it should be Bridget, but it's definitely spelled Bridget. I understand your concerns. I understand your concerns about me taking up this dangerous line of work. As a member of STARS, I will always be in the line of fire. I figured this was as good a time as any to try and explain my actions. Bridget, I know I've talked about her before, but the memory of my little sister eats at me from the inside. I couldn't save her from that criminal. I know you tried to console me, telling me that there was nothing I could do being so young. But I was so paralyzed by fear and doubt that I couldn't do anything. My baby sister was killed right in front of my very eyes and I couldn't move an inch. I couldn't protect her. I was so helpless. It feels like I should have died in her place, and I just can't shake that feeling. All I can do is try to bury that feeling and protect the people that need it most, so they don't have to go through what I did. I'm not giving up this job, and I will continue to protect who I can. Stars is the only way I can live with myself. I don't want to die in vain. I don't. I never want to hesitate when that moment comes again. Don't worry, I'm not that little kid anymore, and I'll come back alive, I promise. You're the most important thing in my life, and I always want to be there for you when you need me. Love, Richard. Leon S. Kennedy Profile. 
After graduating from the police academy, he asks to be assigned to Raccoon City Police who are in the middle of investigating the bizarre murders in the area. Upon arrival to the devastated city, he does what he can to rescue the survivors. Although he has little practical experience, he makes up for it with a strong survival instinct and natural abilities. Once escaping Raccoon City, he is scouted to become an agent for the U.S. government. He has a strong sense of justice and never hesitates to act. His youth can sometimes leave him, lead him to astray when it comes to the fairer sex. <laughs> That's funny. He thinks with his penis, basically, is what that file is trying to say. <laughs> I mean, it's true. Walking package, dude. All right, we've got, I think, three more. Looks that way. We'll play Chris again, why not? And we'll rock. Uh, what kind of weaponry do we want to sport this time? We'll bring a Magnum. The two continue to s descend deeper and deeper as if plunging down into the depths of hell itself. Jill and Chris drew closer to the most powerful threat they had ever faced, the new B.O.W. We're so we're so deep.
I don't like where that magnum is positioned in here, but whatever. Whatever. Hey, Siren, how's it going? Oh! So much for that, uh, that method of traversal there. That ain't gonna happen. Sneak in while you're working. Oh, snap. Don't get caught. <laughs> Unless they have the keys to my house, they won't know. Okay, yeah, that's... All right. Oh! I got the file. <laughs> uh, I'm using a controller, Siren. I uh, unfortunately don't have a Wii. Well, I do have a Wii, but I don't own this game on Wii. You piece of shit. Which way should we go? What's that switch do? That device is linked to the door. If we take it out, the door should open. Oh, well, that's fun. Let's go this way. And over. It must be set up this way to confuse intruders. What could be up ahead? Now, my follow notification is is made originally. Oh, you piece of shit, dude. He has fucking iframes. 
So he didn't stagger. Whatever, dude. The last two enemies before the fucking boss. And now I have to do the boss without my fast. It's probably where they test BOWs. I'm sure you understand the thrill of battle and the rush that comes with the feeling of being alive after a good battle. Another Umbrella Psycho. The latest in Umbrella's product line. Talos? Talos. The tyrant that's in uh, Vendetta reminds me a lot of this tyrant. Red Queen computer. The ultimate weapon. Rockets? We need to shoot them down. So this is what they've been developing. What do we do now? Nothing seems to be working. We have to find a weakness. Moment of truth. This should be interesting. Isn't he done fighting yet? It's just a matter of time. Let's finish him. Well, shit. He transformed? Is this his real- That did the trick. Chris, aim for that tear in the shoulder and chest. Concentrate fire. Right. I have a bad feeling about this. Chris, look out. Watch the tentacles. Take it out. I'm fucking dead, dud. Did the trick. Chris, aim for that tear in the shoulder and chest. Concentrate fire. Right. I have a bad feeling about this. Chris, look out. Watch the tentacles. Take it out. He transformed? Is this his real form? This is it. Let's take him down. Whatever we do, we have to finish him off. Dude, I fucking did that. Good lord, man. Why does this game not recognize fucking inputs for shit, dude? I'm 
dead. Love how he says even a god can't control it and then thinks he can. Yeah. It's pretty funny. He transformed? That did the trick. Chris, aim for that tear in the shoulder and chest. Concentrate fire. Right. I'm tired of this game not taking my fucking inputs, dude. I'm so sick of this game just fucking stealing my inputs, man. That did the trick. Chris, aim for that tear in the shoulder and chest. Concentrate fire. Right. I have a bad feeling about this. Chris, look out. Watch the tentacles. Take it out. Look, there. Yeah, I see it. That must be its weak spot. Even the great Achilles had his heel. You're hurt. Stay back. Dude. made this one to last. God damn it, dude. I always, by the time I get to this part of the game, I always just have no fucking ammo to do this. That did the trick. Chris, aim for that tear in the shoulder and chest. Concentrate fire. Right. I have a bad feeling about this. Chris, look out. Watch the tentacles. Take it out. He transformed? Is this his real form? This is it. Let's take him down. Whatever we do, we have to finish him off. This is so fucking dumb, dude. Look, there. Yeah, I see it. That must be its weak spot. Even the great Achilles had his heel. There's no fucking way to dodge that shit, dude. I'm literally spamming it like this, and it doesn't fucking work. Oh my god. He transformed? That did the trick. Chris! Aim for that tear in the shoulder and chest. Concentrate fire. Right. Fucking impossible to aim, dude. Look, there. Yeah, I see it. That must be its weak spot. Even the great Achilles had his heel. You're hurt. Stay back. Dude. What the fuck? Come on, man. That did the trick. Chris, aim for that tear in the shoulder and chest. Concentrate fire. Right. 
I have a bad feeling about this. Chris, look out! Watch the Fuck this move. shit! Take it out! He transformed? Is this his real form? This is it. Let's take him down. Whatever we do, we have to finish him off. Look, there. Yeah, I see it. That must be its weak spot. <laughs> My life is Even the great shit. Achilles had his heel. You're hurt. Stay back. Dude. Dude, come on. What the hell are you doing? He transformed? Is this his real form? This is it. Let's take him down. Whatever we do, we have to finish him off. I have a bad feeling about this. Chris, look out. Watch the tentacles. Take it out. The trick. Chris, aim for that tear in the shoulder and chest. Concentrate fire. Right. You're hurt. Stay back. Look, there. Yeah, I see it. That must be its weak spot. Even the great Achilles had his heel. Certainly made this one to last. Chris, aim for the mouth. God damn it, dude. It's every time, it's always the ceiling bullshit, man. And I feel like you just have to waste so much ammo Fuck just to shit. get it, like, in the right he spot. Transformed? Is this his real form? This is it. Let's take him down. Whatever we do, we have to finish him off. God damn it, dude. I'm literally right, just trying to back. pick... I'm literally just trying to pick up fucking ammo. And it's that fucking hard. Transformed? Is this his real form? This is it. Let's take him down. Whatever we do, we have to finish him off. I'm spamming R1. Are you fucking kidding me, dude? Damn it. Better not get close. Stay on your toes. This game, hurt. like, Stay if back. you're... So if you're, like, shooting... That did the trick. Chris, aim for that tear in the shoulder and chest. Concentrate fire. Right. I have a bad feeling about this. Chris, look out. Watch the tentacles. Take it out. <laughs> now, it's definitely R1. The game just is really fucking shitty, and, and it seems like the input window is so inconsistent. That did the trick. Chris, aim for that tear in the shoulder and chest. Concentrate fire. Right. I have a bad feeling about this. Chris, look out. Watch the tentacles. Take it out. He transformed? Is this his real form? This is it. Let's take him down. Whatever we Like, do, it moved the camera before the fucking rocks were done falling, man. fight is so stupid, man. Uh, Rezzy, if it's a form of tyrant, 
It's called Talos. That did the trick. Chris, aim for that tear in the shoulder and chest. Concentrate fire. Right. I God damn it, dude. I can't. This. Chris, look out. Watch the tentacles. Take it out. Weak spot. Even the great Achilles had his heel. Chill! The mouth! They certainly made this one to last. Fuck, dude. It's like... Yeah, dude. Playing with a control... This boss is a fucking nightmare with a controller. And even still, even without a... Con or with the... Um, Transformed? Is this his real form? E even this like with it. other... Take like with the, the Joy-Con... Joy not fucking Joy-Con. I can't talk Aim right now. Tear in the shoulder and chest. Concentrate fire. Even right. with the motion controllers, it's still a fucking nightmare, dude. This boss fight is just really shit... Like... The design is so bad. Like, look at this shit, dude. They move faster than you can even fucking move the goddamn controller. Combat knife slash work on the tentacles? I don't think so. That did the trick. Chris, aim for that tear in the shoulder and chest. Concentrate fire. Right. He transformed? Is this his real form? This is it. Let's take him down. Whatever we do, we have to finish him off. Nope, definitely doesn't work. God damn it, dude. They give you no time to react to this at all. That did the trick. Chris, aim for that tear in the shoulder and chest. Concentrate fire. Right. 
I have a bad feeling about this. Chris, look out! Watch the tentacles! Take it out! He transformed? Is this his real form? This is it. Let's take him down. Whatever we do, we have to finish him off. See it. That must be its weak spot. Even the great Achilles had his heel. Chris! Aim for the mouth! They certainly made this one to last. Thank God. Kiss my ass, bitch. Yeah, that's right. for we struck a fatal blow the end of umbrella is just a question of time but yeah he's still out there the talos project umbrella placed so much faith in and failed however chris and the others were a little too quick to pat themselves on the back it was not by justice or faith that they would prevail against Umbrella that day. No, it was only with my help that they were able to succeed. The only thing that can defeat power is more, is power. more power. Ironic, perhaps, but the truth can be so cruel. Oh, that was so bad. I'm just glad I made it through that scenario. <laughs> that was rough, dude. Talos Notes. Code name Talos. The T stands for Tyrant and the rest of the code name stands for Armored Lethal Organic System. This bioweapon uses a Tyrant as a base while adding remote computer control capabilities via a chip implanted in the brain. Its cardiovascular system is artificially improved to give it mobility unthinkable in a natural organ organism. 
Its body is armored in a special metallic alloy that not only helps it defend itself from missiles and other projectile fire, but also restrains runaway T-virus mutation. It has also been equipped with weaponry to allow it to respond to distant targets. Although it is a humanoid BOW, it has enough armor and firepower to stand against a tank. The code name represents the name of a bronze giant from Greek mythology. Red Queen Notes. The code name for the AI defense system developed by Umbrella. The AI is contained within UMF-013. However, the AI has unrestricted access to the entire Umbrella network for administration, monitoring, and carrying out certain procedures. This additional functionality is a security failsafe, but in most circumstances, Red Queen is in the background performing only its primary monitoring function. In emergencies, it will serve a more active role and protect sensitive systems and data from intrusion, along with cleaning up hostiles. It is self-aware and can take these measures based on its own judgment. Well, shit. Oh, I think I have enough stars maybe to finish upgrading this thing. Hold on. Nope, I need six. Rip, dude. That's all right. The only thing that can defeat power is more power. Yeah, you already said that, Wesker. One constant in this universe. However, there is no point in power if it consumes itself. I will enlist the help of an old friend against our common foe. I will use one pawn to eliminate the other and emerge with the spoils for myself. 2 a.m. Nice and early. There's no time to wait for authorization from the Russian government. That facility is an umbrella base. Yeah. We can't let them get away with this. Chris, it appears our fates are forever intertwined. Wester wearing a nice suit. Casualties. Over 90% of the research staff have been eliminated. In the primary contamination zone, the survival rate is less than 2%. It is such a waste to destroy this place. But we don't have a choice. With you and Talos, we can always start over. Is that so? Proceed with the Talos activation. We need him operational before the Russian government arrives. Acknowledged. Resetting activation program schedule. Two airborne objects are approaching at high speeds toward the facility from the northeast. Did you think it would be that easy? I would love to see Albert and challenge. Alex working back to back. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure. They don't really... I mean, they talked a little bit about it in Revelations 2, but it seems like they didn't really... They didn't really hash it all out at, at any point in time. Out of my way, now. No, not Nikolai. His name is Sergei.
just finished our R3 playthrough a bit ago. So that voice is fresh. Nice and fresh. Small fry. Gosh, the frame rate gets so bad. this. Oh! How exciting. See that superhuman hmm, skill shortcut. here.
Comrade Wesker. Welcome to my humble abode. The humble abode. I see you are still resolved to go down with the ship, Colonel. Umbrella's not going anywhere. All of the pain, the punishment, and the difficulties help to make Umbrella stronger. It's a shame you couldn't understand. Stand aside. <laughs> oh, I almost forgot. Here are a few of my old friends I'd like to introduce you to. Charmed. Russia's such a peaceful place, don't you agree? A perfect place for your final resting spot. For your spot. I'm more powerful than last time. A protective coat that leaves the head. The reason why I brought this weapon with me is because it's really fucking powerful. What? Really, dude? Oh my god. This fight was going so well, too. I actually have enough ammo for this fight for once. Good lord. I'm more powerful than last time. A protective coat that leaves the head.
God damn it. Seriously? Understand like why there's just so much fucking movement and it's impossible. Than last time. A protective it's not actually impossible. The, the the fact that you're on rails makes this like ten times more fucking difficult. Seriously. down. Got him. Exactly, Kai. Why not use the super strength? Alright, well, at least I killed it. Thank God. Good Lord. What? Wait, how do I how do I unlock the other stuff? Mm, did I not earn enough stars? Maybe I didn't get earn enough stars, I don't know. 
There's supposed to be another chapter, dang it. That's bullshit. I feel like I need to either get more stars or there's like certain ones that I have to complete with a better rank. I don't know. Let's see. I can only guess that it's probably related to having to do certain... Like, you probably need a certain rank with certain shit. And I got a lot of C ranks recently, so... I mean, it wouldn't... Wouldn't really surprise me that... Like, I got A, 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 B, B. And then... Some S's, A's, and B's. I got B ranks all across the board there. And then this was atrocious. But I mean, if I had to guess, like I'm probably only like a couple stars away, but I gotta take a break real quick. I gotta use the bathroom and uh, grab a little snack. I'm probably just gonna have a Huel um, bar for my snack, but I will be right back. All right, cool. I'm cool with that. Uh, yeah, let me... Let's just assume so that way I don't have to like go back and grind other scenarios. Like I don't want to spend time doing that. So let's just pick up on this save file and we'll go ahead and do Dark Legacy 2 and then we'll go back and do um, Force Survivor and Ada scenario. I don't know what stuff I upgraded at this point. I think I've got a lot of rank fours if I'm not mistaken. I've upgraded a few things here, but. I got 160 shotgun rounds. Good lord. Well, let's. I mean, I guess. I've got plenty of ammo. Let's do that. This is another save file, though, so I didn't have to grind. So it's whatever. It would have taken me like four hours to. Yeah, Andy, I, I... Hang on, let me read this. West Carissa innermost recess and prepared to meet his nemesis. Oh, shit, I didn't get to read it all the way. Whatever. Um, yeah, I play, I did a playthrough of this like a year ago. And... Um, like, I kept the file and everything, so... Maybe for Dark Side Chronicles, I'll just use my old file. I just didn't want to be in like a new game plus scenario, but it's kind of unavoidable when the game sort of forces you to grind to unlock the other scenarios, but I'm just not going to, I'm not going to worry about it. Like for the, for the purposes of this being a lore playthrough and me not wanting to have to replay scenarios, if it means that I have to save time by loading a different file and it might look because I have to edit the video down from a YouTube side of things. Like I'll have to edit it so that way I cut out A, the break and all that. Like I would have literally had to edit out those extra scenarios and stuff just to like make it non-repetitive. I, I think this way is better.
It's gonna be such a subtle change though with the weapons that I don't think it'll be that big of a deal. I don't think it'll be a huge problem. That sick rocket launcher, dude. Anti-tank gun. Uh, you haven't missed much. Just continuing Umbrella Chronicles. Excuse me. Burn. Burn. Causing quite the diversion. Everything's going just as I expected. RE4 Mercs. Oh, yeah. determine once they fall off that ledge. Dead center, let's go.
of my time. What a waste of my time. at hand. Oh shit, it's a dead end. Oh wait, no, just kidding. Double doors. Code name Talos. A pinnacle of biological weaponry. All controlled by the Red Queen computer. The ultimate weapon. You got Ivan? Not bad, Kuma. So this is it. Yes. She was activated that night at the mansion. I extracted her before Raccoon City became nothing more than a memory. Her and I have a lot in common. The Red Queen. She linked with Talos. Caramel infused coffee. Dude, yeah, check out Huel, man. It's uh it's an awesome product, dude. I use it every day. Well, ever since, as long as I have product, I use it every day. And I feel really good when I use it, too. Like, it actually, I feel like I get better sleep. I feel more refreshed when I wake up. I feel better during the day. I feel better about myself, just in general. Like, it's just, it's just an all-around awesome product. Creativity disappoints me. I expected more from you. I have to wait for him to stop jumping around. Is the little black rat windy? Not like this. Your weakness, Sergei. Enjoy your pain. What a wretched state you've come to. I hope you still have some fight left, old friend. I will only grow stronger with each strike. Not even you can question the superiority of my power now. My purpose remains as... Well, shit. Fine. Have it your way. Yeah, it's definitely a feel-good product for sure, man. And it also helps you save money on your meals, too. Like, like when you do the subscription model, it ends up working out to, like, more, depending on where you live, typically less than $3 US per meal. Oh! No! We are not done yet! Run! 
I guess um, all of the tyrants were created in his image. I forget what file discloses that, but I guess all of the tyrants that you see are like essentially clones of that guy. Like at least genetically speaking. It looks like you have finished what you came to do as well, Cress. Just as I predicted. Goodbye, fair lady. Data water initialized. 80 seconds until completion. He literally just like formatted Umbrella's hard drive. <laughs> like the Red Queen was basically the keeper of all of their data as well. Soon, Umbrella will be gone forever. They held the power of the T-Virus in their hands, but they lacked the proper vision. The true vision of the future. And now, it falls to me to usher in this new future. Wesker's such a badass dude. Yo, JJ! We're not actually done yet, but yeah. Enjoy these these credits here. Maybe we'll do the credits later. <laughs> Maybe we'll do the credits later because we still have like other stuff to do. We have two more scenarios left. And then maybe we'll just like pretend to roll the credits at the end of that. to remain calm and collected even in the most extreme situations in umbrella's underground laboratory i forgot that wisdom something about the meeting with leon changed me first things first though. i must escape this town and survive in order to accomplish my objective i can save the truth for after i make it out alive yeah after <laughs> She's in, a, she's in a rough condition here. <laughs> Real rough shape, dude. Yep, this is like, this is after she finds her way out of the lab after falling down a... This wound's getting worse. Well, I'm already fucking dead, dude. I forgot that you, you almost have to immediately use the striker, otherwise... Otherwise, you die. You actually start with low health in this scenario. Let's just let's just get that striker out of here real quick.
Yeah, Frost. I, I think the reason why they do it in this game is because this is technically like Wesker's account of the events of like the first few games. And Dark Side Chronicles is Leon's account, and Leon doesn't find out about what happens with Ada for like a, a while after. Like, I think it's years later before he learns that Ada's still alive. And this is like the part where she starts working for Wesker right here, so. Yeah, as far as I remember, this is supposed to be an account of all of the, um, the happenings of, like, you know, again, Wesker and Leon's account leading up to the events of RE4, as far as I remember. So, technically, Leon wouldn't know that Ada is still alive, since the account of these events takes place before Resident Evil 4. So, I think that would more or less... I mean, it's kind of abstract, but I mean, that would more or less explain why... Easter egg, we can see the apple in from the first chapter of RE Outbreak. You literally play inside of the apple and in the hellfire scenario he lost his will and chose death he was weak wesker and you ada you have also failed your actions of betraying us and helping that leon fellow will have consequences for our organization see this it's a tissue fragment with birkin's g virus He's like, oh, shit, we don't have to kill you now. <laughs> he was, like, really pissed, then he's like, oh. Oh, you got it. Shit. It is in our best interest that you survive. The gene virus sample is required. If the T virus did this, yeah. What would happen if the G virus got? Yeah, it? he's, he's like, he's like, you fucked up, Ada, and there's gonna be severe consequences. And then she puts the G virus on him. And he's like, oh, never mind. <laughs> never, never mind about that shit. What I said, I didn't say anything. Just don't even worry about it.
this city needs to fix its streets. <laughs> oh, now I can use my new toy. Hey, look, more outbreak areas. <laughs> You know, there's zombies outside, but she's just like, yeah, now's a good time to take a quick break. She bandaged herself up? I mean, I would assume so. I mean, I wouldn't say it's necessarily impossible for her to bandage herself up, but I don't know. If they've killed Nyx yet. The survivors, you know. He's literally flying through the air like goddamn Superman. I 
Can't you leave a girl alone? There it is. There's too much in my way. I need to get higher. Maybe from there. I just need to hit that container. I'm sorry, I don't have time. Hey! Huh. Try, try again. Try, try again. Damn it. Come on, dude. Stop. Jesus Christ. Try. Try again. Why is this taking so fucking long? <laughs> you think I'm reckless, don't you? You stole the computer core from your own company. I wouldn't exactly call that stable. <laughs> the people who go down in history as its heroes are never stable. Inside UMF-013, is all of the research data. With that, Umbrella will rise from the ashes. <laughs> Just think of how many choppers are all leaving Raccoon City at the same time. I survived the fate of Raccoon City thanks to Wesker's warning. Of course, I knew the only reason my life was spared. That's supposed to be Spencer? I'm not sure. I don't think so, but maybe. I don't think they specifically say who it is. We were both used to being backstabbed and manipulated. I had a feeling our partnership would last a little while longer. Jake! Jake! One more scenario left for you guys. Fourth survivor. Freaking hunk, dude! Oh, shit! That's right. Mother freaking hunk, my dudes. This, this is Nighthawk. 
Or this is this is alpha, whatever, you know. September 30th. Oh shit. It's Hunk my dude. That's Nighthawk. I have secured G. I'm all that is left of Alpha Team. I'm en route to the rendezvous point. <laughs> Once again, only you survived, Mr. Death. Roger that. Don't be late. Relax, Mr. Reaper. Ah, oh, shit. I see. Hold on. I hate it when they fucking do this, dude. They literally put this shit... They literally put this shit where you can't fucking see it. He looks back one time... ...to go... To ...check out some shit. He injected himself with the G virus and came back to life. That's literally all you get to pick up that fast. That's unfortunate. How are the other G samples? The containers were damaged in the fight. And the virus has likely contaminated the area. We will have to contain it. Understood. I'll put in the request. What the hell are those things? Crosstalk. Connection must be bad. It has been days now since the last contact with Raccoon City. Safsprin, my dude. Amazing RE3 reference there. Adderville, baby! Yo, where's Aqua Cuck? Aqua cuck. For survivor, baby. Oops.
Aqua cut, baby! Let's go! <laughs> this whole scenario is just one big troll. This whole scenario is just a giant fucking troll. Oh shit! Met point K twelve. Requesting assistance. I repeat. Nah, Requesting rip dude. Assistance. Rip dude. I'm already out of there, dude. I can't come back. Sorry, sorry, it's nothing. Survival is your responsibility. Exactly, exactly. It's fucking war, bro! Shit! My extraction point.
JJ. Mission accomplished. The survival rate was 4%, and valuable human resources were lost. But that is war. Relax, Mr. Aceblood. The mission objective takes priority over everything else. Holding to that principle is why I have never failed a mission. Hey, look. It's Chris Redfield. The death cannot die. I'm just kidding. That's my... That's my... I suspect that Chris Redfield is actually hunk. He's been hunk the whole time. And... And that that's just all I'm saying, Okay. That's my guess. Secret scenario is now available in two player mode. You can see his reflection in that vial and it looks like Chris. It says secret scenario is available in two player. Where's the secret scenario? Special stage. <laughs> no, God. Ah. Yeah, this is fun. One hit kill. It's I don't even know what this is. I don't think I've ever played this. You're pretty good. I think their positions are randomized. They explode. Great. Dude, there's no fucking way to do this on fucking handgun. Or on fucking PS3. There's no way. <laughs> the way they crawl across is funny. Fuck. Fuck, dude. The There, it's so fast. There's no fucking way, dude. Yeah, there's no fucking way, dude. With Without the motion controls, there's no fucking way. I'm not going to do that shit. 
Nope. It looks fun, but I'm not doing this with a PlayStation controller. <laughs> All right, there you go. You guys can enjoy the credits. I know the credits rolled a little prematurely because we saw two more scenarios to do, but yo, that was Resident Evil, The Umbrella Chronicles. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I know we didn't get to read all the files. I think I got one there at the end, actually. Hold on a second. Let me see. I think that there was a file that I missed. Let me see here. Oh yeah, there's a couple. Let's see. Let's see if there's any files on this save file that I might have missed. Let's see. That one I know I've seen. Rebecca Chambers. Rebecca is an expert in the manufacture and preparation of pharmaceuticals and serves as the team's medic. She's highly talented and graduated college at the young age of 18. Although she looks delicate, she is a woman of action and calm in the face of danger. She lacks experience in actual combat, so she can appear childish at times and can sometimes hesitate when finding herself overwhelmed by an unknown situation. All right, yeah, we'll read some of the files that maybe I didn't get done before. Billy Cohen profile. Originally a second lieutenant in the USMC, he was sentenced to death for the first degree murder for his role in the death of 23 people. He is perceptive and can expertly handle any weapon. His body, hardened by marine training, is a match for any monster in battle. He is a cynical man of few words, but possesses a keen sense of justice and a deep passion for his duty. Ecliptic Express Notes. A special express train bound for the management training facility. It appears to be a typical train at first glance, but its purpose is to bring Umbrella employees to the facility to undergo special training. The rails are privately owned and stretch through Raccoon Forest to allow direct delivery of materials and human resources to various Umbrella facilities. Raccoon Forest Notes. Duty. <laughs> A large forest on the northern outskirts of Raccoon City includes the Arclay Mountains, a rich habitat home to a multitude of the area's woodland creatures. The abundant abundance of life... God, I hate this font so much. The abundance of life in the forest is one contributing factor to the rapid, widespread dispersion and mutation of the virus resulting in a biohazard. The Arclay Research Facility and Management Training Facility both lie within the forest. I think the leech notes were already read. Yep. James Marcus profile. I think that one was... Yep. I know we found that one as well. I think all of these were found. Eliminator notes. Did I read... Did we read the eliminator notes? I don't remember. Large monkey. Yeah. Yeah, we did read that one. Okay. Queen Leech Notes. I don't think we did this one. This creature has mutated to become the Queen Leech that controls all leeches. It typically takes the form of Dr. James Marcus, but can break this mold to become a transfigured first form. The Queen Leech entered, first entered the remains of Dr. Marcus many years ago and merged with his DNA. Over a long incubation period, the Queen Leech eventually began thinking and acting just like Dr. Marcus did when he was alive. As the name Queen Leech implies, it commands countless mutated leeches. If it senses bodily harm, it will cease restraining its natural funcu functions and mutate into a larger second form. I know we did this one. We did that one too. We did that one as well. I think we did this one too. Yep. These things are cool though. It does show you like some key items from the different games. These charms molded, modeled on leeches were used in a stand with the statue of Marcus. Circuit board with a chip used in the gondola control panel. Keys with fire and water emblems used to open doors with similar markings. Yeah. Lighter lockpick. Chris and Jill's standard equipment. Other characters had similar items. These three decorations were used to obtain the Magnum. Oops. These special recordable media devices were used in combination to open a lock. 
used for the elevator. The medals were hidden in the books. X-ray pictures of Clark David and Gail Holland with password hints. Shiny gemstones used in certain boxes or statues. I know we read Jill's profile. I know we read Chris's and Kenneth's profile. I just want to get the little new thing out of here. We did not read Forrest's profile, though. I know that much. Forrest Spider profile. A member of Star's Bravo team, his sharp shooting skills almost rival Chris's. He escaped to the mansion, but was attacked by a monster and left for dead on the balcony where his body was later discovered. Rip Forest. Stars Notes. Special Tactics and Rescue Service, or STARS, was established within the Raccoon Police Department and is divided into an Alpha and Bravo team. This elite group was formed to respond to terrorism, organized crime, and emergencies too difficult for the regular police force to handle. Its members include a hand-picked group of specialists, the best of the best. Their funding was provided by a grant from private corporations, most notably Umbrella Corporation. The Mansion Notes. Umbrella's research facility built deep within Raccoon Forest. Uh, oh, we already read this one. Just kidding. Uh, Cerberus' Notes. Created by Minister and T-Virus. Dormans. Yep, we did that one too. Hunter, yep, we did Hunter as well. I know we did Neptune. I don't think we did the Wasp, though. These Wasps were secondarily infected by ingesting insect carriers of the T-Virus. They have grown to enormous size as a result. These Wasps are societal insects that congregate in nests. Though it may be possible to fend off one or two, and any unfortunate victim of their attack will likely fall prey due to a large number of creatures when they attack in swarms. Their stinger could deliver large doses of their natural venom mixed with the T-Virus. Adder Notes. This small venomous snake was secondarily affected by, infected by the T-Virus, leading to a mutation with an enhanced ability to attack prey. It has the ability to multiply with incredible speed, and its already potent venom has been further enhanced by the effects of the virus. The adder's bite also carries with it the potential to further spread the T-Virus. I know we did Web Spinner and Black Tiger as well. We did Plant 42. Yep, we definitely did Plant 42. Uh, I know we did the Extract as well. We did that. Researcher's letter. June 8th, 1998, my dearest Ada. By the time you read this letter, I will no longer be the man you knew. The results of my test came back today, and as I suspected, they came back positive. I feel like I am teetering on the edge of sanity just thinking about my impending doom. I would give anything not to have to become one of them. As far as I know, you are not infected. I sincerely hope things did not reach such a desperate pass, but if it has turned out that you are the last person remaining alive, I want you to get the material from the visual data room. Then activate the self-destruct system in the power room and escape from here. Please do everything in your power to make this whole incident public. If everything is still running normally, you should be able to release all the locks using the security system. I've set up a terminal in the small security room so you can log into the system using my name and your name as the password. You will need another password to release the lock of the door in the basement level 2 where the visual data room is located. As a safety measure, I have coded that password into an x-ray picture, a run genogram. I know you, and I'm sure you'll be able to work it out without any trouble. There's just one more thing, and it is my last request. Hope you never have to lay eyes on me in that state. But if you do happen to run into me and in my hideous form, I beg you to put me out of my misery. I hope you understand. Thank you, Ada. Yours truly, John. Chimera Notes. This grotesque B.O.W. was created by combining the genes of a human being with those of a fly. Although the general shape is humanoid, it has retained many fly characteristics, such as the ability to crawl on walls and its sharp appendages. Its intelligence is on par with that of an insect, and its body contains within it numerous maggots. Its appearance provokes fear in humans that witness it. They are pretty freaky looking, that is for sure.
This talks about the one in ten million thing, right? No, not that one, but I know we read that one. BOW notes. A bioorganic weapon, or BOW, is an organism mutated using the power of the T-virus developed by Umbrella. There are numerous varieties of BOWs, all developed to accomplish different aims from combat to viral contamination. Widely considered the most successful of the BOWs is the humanoid tyrant. BOWs include all organic weapons intentionally designed by Umbrella, but does not include monsters created as a result of secondary infection by the T-virus. Interesting. Brad Vickers profile. A member of Star's Alpha Team, he is in charge of chemical protection and also serves as the team's helicopter pilot. He is prone to cowardice, a trait that most notably demonstrated when he fled and left his team for dead at the mansion. His guilty conscience eventually forced him to return to try and save the remaining survivors. Despite his one moment of courage, he can never change his true nature. In the end, he was tracked down and killed by the Nemesis. See, look, this is literally in the Umbrella Chronicles that he's tracked down and killed by Nemesis. Yet, they completely changed that in RE3 2020. What a shame. It's in the official chronicle that he is tracked down and killed by Nemesis. Come on, dudes. I know we did this one already as well. Enrico Marini Profile. He is the leader of STARS Bravo Team and second in command of STARS. Enrico is a veteran with survival skills and is highly regarded by his subordinates. Enrico's Bravo Team was on their way to investigate the bizarre murders in Raccoon Forest when their helicopter was forced to make an emergency landing. They proceeded to investigate on foot. Along the way, his team got split up and attacked by monsters in the forest. Enrico decided that Bravo Team's best chances of survival were with fleeing into the mansion, a secret Umbrella research facility. After escaping to the mansion, Enrico soon learned that there was a traitor within stars. Yep, we read that one. Yawn Notes. This poisonous snake bred for use as a BOW test subject escaped and was subsequently infected with the T-virus, causing it to grow to a gigantic size. It quickly made the mansion its home and ate many of the research staff. The venom it secretes through its sharp fangs requires a powerful serum to counteract. If the victim is not given prompt treatment, the venom will kill the vi uh, victim in a matter of minutes. As it appears to be yawning, as uh, it swallows prey whole, it was given the name yawn. Gosh, there's a lot of files in this one. Good lord. Virus memo. It's snake. We go way back, so I hope you forgive me for cutting the formalities. I don't have much time. I must describe how to use the item in question. The sample you have been given is from one of the mutation stocks. It possesses a unique characteristic. It should be injected into the host at least five minutes before needed. The results are almost immediate, but they do require a few minutes to completely take effect. Even in death, as long as some portion of the host remains, the virus can reconstruct the rest of its body and bring it back to life. During this process, uh, process there is a brief period where the host appears, for all intents and purposes, dead. In experiments with animals, 70% of the subjects grew more powerful as a result of this resurrection. Their muscular and circulatory systems far exceeded those they possessed in life. This virus has been designed to conquer death. 20% came back to life, but with none of the beneficial side effects present in the primary group. The remaining 10% uh, remained dead. In other words, there was a 90% revival rate. The virus had not been used on a human yet, but that is soon to change. I'm not sure how this will help, but I'm sure you will put it to good use. Good luck. So this is talking about the serum that Wesker injects himself with before he gets killed by the tyrant. Well, killed by the tyrant. A letter to someone. Yes, we already did that one. Family picture. Did that one. Did that one. Lisa Trevor profile. Yes, we did that one as well. Oops. 
I think we still have more files to get through here. Let's see. Ooh, nice. Jill's ID card used to open a storage room. Plugs required to activate a switch. These balls were held by statues and required to solve a picture puzzle. Ada together with her boyfriend, John. Their name served as a password. UBCS notes. Did that one. Did that one. I know we did that one. Ooh, here we go. Grave digger notes. An arthropod that is mutated to an enormous size as a side effect from the T virus. It burrows beneath the ground until it senses prey, at which point it will rush up to the surface to take it by surprise. The grave digger maintains the appearance of a worm and can grow to 10 meters in length. Its powerful jaws can chew through even concrete, and its amazing digestive system allows it to swallow a human victim whole. Yep, we got those. Large roach notes. These were normal roaches that lived in the sewers until becoming infected with the T-virus and growing to 40 centimeters or eight times their normal size. Their natural hardiness has remained intact, helping their population to explode. They have a tendency to bite soft flesh on their prey, and on humans, this tends to be the area around the carotid artery. There have been reports of attacks on humans where groups of the cockroaches have leapt to their victim's face, suffocating them with numbers. They've fought uh, with mutated rats for control of the sewers and won. Since then, they have demonstrated a tendency towards cannibalism. Facts from the HQ. Attention, the Raccoon City project has been abandoned. Our political maneuvering in the Senate to delay their plans has failed. All supervisors should evacuate immediately. The U.S. Army is going to execute their plan tomorrow morning. The city will be obliterated at daybreak. Nemesis T-type pursuer notes. This BOW is the result of combining a nemesis parasite with a host tyrant body. The introduced nemesis parasite controls the host completely. Its improved intelligence gives it the capacity to follow orders as well as the ability to operate a variety of weaponry. A protective coat was wrapped around it to provide protection against billets and explosions as well as to act as a failsafe should it go out of control. Thanks to the parasite's secretions, the regenerative powers of the nemesis T-type were incredible. Even if it were somehow stopped by an attack, it could mutate and evolve into a new form capable of withstanding further attacks. The new forms and their abilities are completely unpredictable. Resident Evil 3, Digest 1. It was 1998, and signs of the coming fall were in the air of Raccoon City. Jill remained in the city to investigate Umbrella, but did not realize the situation had become so dire. Upon realizing the extent of the danger, she decided to escape. The virus had rapidly spread, and much of the town's population had already turned into zombies. Umbrella sent in the UBCS under the guise of evacuating the survivors. One of them was the mercenary Carlos Oliveira. Jill and Carlos began to work together and try to and escape the hell on Earth Raccoon City had become. A black-coated monster stood between them and their freedom. Nemesis, or the Pursuer, was intent on wiping out every last member of STARS. Nemesis had already made short work of Brad and continued to track Jill down to accomplish its mission objectives. Digest 2. The tenacious nemesis was cutting down one UBCS soldier after another. Of course, a betrayer was also responsible for many UBCS losses. This betrayer was Nikolai Genoviev, a member of the internal espionage group within Umbrella with special orders. He was planning to take back field combat data from the city to Umbrella while betraying members of the UBCS for money. That is when Carlos Oliveira delivered the startling news. In a matter of hours, a missile that had been launched would annihilate all traces of Raccoon City. There was not much time left, and Nemesis mutated into a more powerful form with each attack. Despite the des desperation of the situation, Nikolai was only interested in the bounty placed on Jill's head. In the meantime, Jill and Carlos continued to look for a means escaping, of escaping the ill-fated town. Operation Report. 
September 27th, 1 o'clock p.m. The West Barricade has been compromised and another exchange ensued. We sheltered the injured in the confiscation room on the first floor temporarily. Twelve more people were injured in the battle. Recorder David Ford. Additional report. Three additional people were killed following the sudden appearance of an unknown creature. This creature is identified by missing patches of skin and razor-like claws. However, its most distinguishing characteristic is its lance-like tongue, capable of impaling a person in an instant. Their numbers, as well as their locations, remain unknown. We have tentatively named this creature the Licker and are currently in the process of developing countermeasures to deal with this new threat. Yeah, we already read that one. Mail to the Chief. We've lost the mansion due to the actions of the renegade operative Albert Wesker. Fortunately, his interference will have no lasting repercussions upon our continued virus research. Our only present concern is the presence of the remaining STARS members, Redfield, Valentine, Burton, Chambers, and Vickers. If it comes to light that the STARS have any evidence as to the activities of our research, dispose of them in such a manner that would appear to be purely accidental. Continue to monitor their progress and make certain their knowledge does not go public. Annette will continue to be your contact through this affair. William Burke. Mr. Ryan Irons, Chief of the Raccoon City Police Department. I have deposited the amount of $10,000 U.S. dollars in the account for your services uh, this term as per our agreement. The development of the G-Virus scheduled to replace the T-Virus is near completion. Once completed, I am certain that I will be appointed to the Executive Board of Umbrella Corp. It is imperative that we proceed with extreme caution. Redfield and the remaining STARS members are still attempting to uncover information on the project. Continue to monitor their activities and block all attempts to investigate the underground research facilities. William Birkin. We have a problem. I have received information informing me that Umbrella HQ has sent spies to recover my research on the G-Virus. There are an unknown number of agents involved. They must not be allowed to take this project away from me as it represents my entire life's work. Search the city thoroughly for any suspicious persons persons. Detain any such individuals by whatever means deemed necessary and contact me immediately through a net. With these precautions, any possible threat should be eliminated. I will not allow anyone to steal my work on the G-Virus, not even Umbrella. William Burke. Ada Wong Profile. A woman shrouded in mystery. She tells Leon that she has come to Raccoon City looking for her lover, but this is only cover. She is actually a spy who has come to retrieve a sample of the G-Virus. She has undergone rigorous special training in firearms and acrobatics, making her a real pro. Ada is always calm and collected, even in the most extreme circumstances. She is cold and mysterious, but can show a feminine side from time to time. Whether she truly cares about anyone else, or is just using her charms to manipulate people, is never clear. Who is the real Ada Wong? No one knows. Resident Evil 2, Digest 2. In the research facility, Claire ran into Annette, an umbrella researcher, and Sherry's mother. She gives Claire a full amount, a uh, full account of the causes leading to the outbreak in Raccoon City. The G monster that was in the sewers was really her husband William, after he injected himself with an experimental virus called the G virus. The outbreak of the virus sparked a battle for control of the new G virus between William and Umbrella. Leon had made his way to a different part of the facility and was attacked by a tyrant. During the fight, he leapt into danger and saved Ada from certain death. They continued through the facility together and a bond began to form between them. Ada finally revealed the truth to Leon that she was actually a spy sent in to steal the G-Virus. While Leon was with Ada, Claire was still with Annette and G had suddenly appeared in front of the pair cutting Annette down. She entrusts the instructions on producing the G-Virus vaccine to Claire shortly before dying. Cherry had become infected with the virus so, and Claire hurried to produce the vaccine. And Claire and Leon reunite and escape the disaster. What will become of the infected Sherry? Chief's Diary. September 23rd. It's all over. Those imbeciles from Umbrella have finally done it. Despite all their promises, they've ruined my beautiful city. Soon the streets will be infested with zombies. I'm beginning to think that I may even be infected myself. If I am, I'll make sure I kill every last person hey, in oh this town. Oh my god, that's fucking Keanu Reeves. What the fuck? Yo, Death, appreciate the host, buddy. Hope you had a good stream. September 24th, I was successful in spreading confusion among the police as planned. I've made sure that no one from the outside will come to help. 
With the delays in, pol uh, in police, da police action, no one will have the chance to escape my city alive. I've seen to it personally that all escape routes from inside the precinct have been cut off as well. There are several survivors still attempting to escape through the lower levels, but I'll make sure no one gets out. September 26th. I've had a change of plans about the remaining survivors inside the precinct. I've decided to hunt them down myself. I shot Ed in the back less than an hour ago. I watched him writhe in pain upon uh, the floor in a pool of his own blood. The expression on his face was positively exquisite. He died with his eyes wide open, staring up at me. It was beautiful. I wonder if the mayor's daughter is still alive. I let her escape so I can enjoy hunting her down later. I'm going to enjoy my new trophy, frozen forever in the pose I choose to give her. Gross. Gross, dude. Plastic bomb detonator. This destructive combination was used to clear the rubble blocking a street. Blue, red, green chemical. These three chemicals were used with the mixing set. This vaccine was made by Carlos for Jill to treat the T-virus infection. These plugs were used, uh, or designed with chess pieces, were used to open a door. This undeveloped film contains images to be used in a news scoop. Ooh, look at all these other files we can read. Oh, man. We already read that one. Done that one already. Yep, that one we read too. I think we got a lot of these. Yep, we read that one. Yeah, death. Richard's letter. Yep, we read that one. I think we got most of these actually. Yeah, we did Leon's profile. He's not he's not too good with the ladies. We did that one. Did that one... I don't think we did Ivan, did we? A derivation of the T-103 Tyrant line that Sergei has re-engineered to act as his personal bodyguard. Its basic combat functionality is that of a T-103, but it has been modified to better assimilate into human society. In addition to the trademark T-103 defensive coat, this model is also equipped with sunglasses that include an HMD. Major improvements with this model include greater powers of comprehension and the ability to pass as human. It is still a T-103 and as such can transform into a super tyrant when the situation calls for it. Which they never show in this game, but you know, fun time. 13th generation supercomputer contained in the underground Raccoon City Research Facility Shelter. All of the data gathered from the network of Umbrella's branches around the world is stored as a backup on this mainframe. This wealth of information is kept in one location to serve as a safety measure should Umbrella run into difficulty and need to be reestablished. Letter from Sergey to Nikolai. Nikolai, I apologize for the delay in responding. You offer Your offer definitely has the potential to turn quite a profit. However, the price I had to pay was high and had to be considered carefully. I have not changed my mind about relinquishing them. I understand that these ten soldiers I fought alongside with are nothing more than a number, a price tag to Umbrella. I'm sure you are finding this all quite amusing, Silver Fox, but this is a sad day for me. I feared the day I would have to make this decision. After all, these men were all raised by me and are a part of me. I can't help but feel reservations about turning these thinking, feeling human beings into biological weapons and cursing them to an eternity of living death. However, I have made my decision and will not waver. Progress is always built on sacrifice. If we are to truly restore our mother into the great country she once was, I am willing to endure any amount of suffering and a price in blood is still a small price to pay. If I have to cut down my very body, it is the sacrifice I'm willing to make. I will wail and shed tears of blood and rend every last flesh of regret from my body if it means I can usher in a new age. My answer, comrade, is yes. Silver Fox, your wish will be granted. Sergei Vladimir. 
Wesker's notes on differing mutations. I have a theory on Sergei's unique course of evolution. I'd always assumed that the variety of effects on the virus brings effects the virus brings about on its host were mere random mutations. However, witnessing firsthand the effects on Sergei combined with what I know of Marcus's transformation points to a common thread between their outcomes. The host's mindset appears to influence the evolution of the virus. Sergei mutated into a monster whose very body is the picture of suffering as he was ripped apart from the inside by thorns. I can only imagine that his transformation represents the true mindset of the person he was inside. While I have no proof, my intuition tells me this must be the case. If the personality of the host can truly affect the course of the virus manifestation, where does that leave me? Sergei Monster Notes Sergei transformed into this monster after injecting himself with a virus. The tentacles binding his arms fuse into one large tentacle. At the end of this appendage is a dangerous claw that can be used for movement or attacking. Alright, that's all the files. Alright, now, roll the credits. <laughs> for real this time. Yo, uh, I know that that's not all the files... Uh, it's, it's really hard to get all of the files in a single playthrough because of, like, how some of them are, like, incredibly well hidden. But I tried to read the ones that I could, and honestly, like, this gives you guys a pretty good, like, foundation for, like, how all of the events from basically 0 through, uh, 3, well, really CVX once we get to Dark Side Chronicles, kind of gives you a good idea of how all of that transpired over the course of the you know, basically starts in July, like the three months, well, six months technically, including CVX, how it all, how it all shakes down and kind of the events that happen between games and stuff um, to, to make everything happen. So, but I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, I, <laughs> I like the context that this game gives, but without a Wiimote or some sort of motion controller, this game is incredibly, incredibly challenging. I played the entirety of this game with a PlayStation 3 DualShock controller. Sorry, a DualShock 3 controller. And it's unnecessarily difficult because of the fact that uh, this controller is just not good for this style of game. With that being said, when you use a Wiimote or a PlayStation Move controller, this game is awesome. It's actually really, really fun. Um... Unfortunately, while I do have a Wii, I don't own this game on Wii. So, um, but overall, in terms of like my review and stuff, like I said, love the story. Love the fact that they're able to kind of consolidate a few games together in, into one game and really give you a good like piece of that story. And for anybody that's like trying to get a good feel for the story, I actually think that this game and Dark Side Chronicles, given the fact that they're relatively short give you a ton of information that like if you were just trying to like not play resident evil 0 1 2 3 and code veronica and play these games instead you'd actually get the majority of the story that you need just from playing these two games so um you know take that as you will but ultimately like it's an okay game when you have the motion Kiss controllers ass, it becomes quite quite a bit better um and and quite honestly as i mentioned quite a bit throughout the entirety of the game. I would love to see something like this in VR. This game what in VR, this game in VR would be absolutely like hands down, amazing VR experience. I hope that they decide to do something like this down the road. I know that Resident Evil 4 is coming out in VR and I'm sure that'll be really cool, but I do hope that they decide to do something like this in VR in the future to kind of bring more life to um, things like Resident Evil 2 and 3 Remake maybe some sort of Resident Evil 0 or Resident Evil 1, you know, re-remake, right? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, I do wish that there was a lot more original assets. Um, you know, Death, as you mentioned there, I mean, the majority of it is Outbreak File 2 assets, which is pretty lazy, <laughs> but uh, literally no locations with the exception of the RPD main hall. That's the only part of this game uh, from the RE3 side of things that's actually in the game. Nothing else is actually in the game um, for RE3, like the actual RE3. So, But uh, yeah, 
All in all, pretty okay game though. I mean, the the whole um, Umbrella's End chapter, that is totally original, which I think is cool that they actually added uh, some extra layers of content. And we also got to see a lot of Wesker's side of things that you don't get to see uh, because of the fact that a lot of the games are told from the protagonist's point of view, whereas this entire game is actually told from Wesker's point of view. So I think that's really cool to actually be able to see things from his point of view, um, to really see kind of, you know, again, like how how all of these gears are spinning over the course of several games and how it all comes together based on one person's account of all of, all of these events. So I hope you guys enjoyed this playthrough. For those who watch on YouTube, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed. And I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.